Ladies and gentlemen, hello, good morning, or oh, uh, hang on, I'm okay, good afternoon, or good evening. Sorry, I was just, uh, just in my sleeping bag having a nap, you know, very, very busy. Um, so, uh, you know, I just took a minute to get everything started off here. Hope that everyone is having a very nice morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are at in the world. Today... We're going to be doing a little bit of looking over some of the class changes that have just happened. And then we're going to be doing a bit of leveling on a mystery alt, who is currently a mystery... Oh, you can see a bit of him. You can see just a little bit. Yeah, more need... It's, it's some... <laughs> this, this may be the giveaway of which alt it is. Oh, wait, I put it on the thumbnail. And the time... Never mind, it'll be obvious. Uh, wait, where's my camera? Hello, how's everyone doing? Wait, is the audio like super quiet in game? That'll fix you. What? Hang on, close something I didn't mean to. Oh, very professional. Anyway, Honeybun, yo, how are you doing? Cleric, what up? Zero Dust, how are you doing today? It was a sad day, yeah. We were we're going through the classes. I missed off Druid and uh, I didn't I didn't get quite get around to it, but Fingers crossed, things have been okay the past few streams. It's, I've had to like turn the bitrate down a bit so it looks a bit more pixelated, but it's never really been a graphics-based game, has it, classic? Uh, time is kind of relevant, so he's kind of right. True. And Floop as well, what up? Uh, yeah. Nacelio is low, and Rexy, what up? You can see there's a, there's a bit of a beard, you know? A nice, I'm having a nice cozy nap. On my paladin before he starts leveling, because uh, you know it's it's just essential. You gotta have the nap, but you gotta keep the beard out. Very important to keep the beard out. Um, but Blizzard have been doing a few class changes. Sleeping bag, yeah, sleeping bag's great. It's a bit of a run to get it, but I recommend it. I do recommend it. Uh, so yeah, one or two class changes to speak of. Now, I think Blizzard are, um, they're doing class buffs, first of all, primarily, right? So obviously they, they nerfed Star Surge the other day. They reduced its base damage by 35%, and they uh, they changed its spell power coefficient from 100% to like 42.9 or something. So there was, uh, you know, that was that was a pretty heavy nerf. But after that, they have now been buffing things. And the first round of buffs are in. So, I'll just take a quick little look at those and see what we have cooking. And uh, hopefully see how it will start to affect things as well. Let's just close that. Okay, so this is what we have at the moment. So, scheduled weekly maintenance in each region. We'll be making the following updates. So, uh, first of all, for feral tanks for the bear druids. Because bears at the moment are... Uh, from what I hear, that they ain't doing so hot. Uh, they ain't so good. Um, they got a number of issues, uh, which is swipe is just like swipe's always been comically bad in this game. Like it just does no damage whatsoever. Like the the version you'll have at level. Why doesn't it show me it? Feral combat. Can I see all the swipes, please? Or the version you'll have at level forty does how much damage exactly? 36 damage, um, and it didn't scale with anything either, so it's like three enemies for 36 damage for 20 rage. This is like genuinely one of the worst abilities in the game. Uh, this is just so unbelievably bad, it's hard to believe it exists. But then again, it's vanilla, you know, there's a lot of uh, outliers when it comes to power levels. Uh, so they're going to be gaining 10% of attack power as damage. Um, realistically, this, this isn't much. Um... The, the damage modifier is, like, not much to go off. So Rogue Shuriken Toss does 15% of AP as uh, damage, as scaling. And that hits four targets. Oh, and it hits five targets. Yeah, you see your main target and four others. So Shuriken Toss is still just objectively better in every single conceivable way than Swipe. Um, but it also says that the threat caused by Swipe has been greatly increased. So I don't know what kind of threat modifier they put on it. Um... Maybe a 200%, 300% thereabouts. Runes don't make sense for that. No, they don't. Um, 
Or we'll see a, another change in a moment, which kind of indicates they're going to keep things the way they are. Rep Haller's really shite right now. It's not good, yeah. I have to agree with that. Um... <laughs> I realize that the, the, the intentions for this paladin are not necessarily going to be wrecked. Ascension, well, well, basically Blizzard's version of it, yeah, Season of Discovery. It's like Ascension with uh, less RNG. And Insta Dasher, yo, what up? No nerf, more buff? Yeah, I think they, there'll be some things they need to nerf, uh, but, you know, buffs are always fun. So the, this is the bit that matters, because it's, it's still going to do awful damage, by the way, like really bad. It's going to add about, probably about 40 damage to it or something. It'll hit 70 to 80, which is still just bad for three targets, but we'll see what the threat modifier is. Uh, next up, Berserk Rune also causes a last rate to hit three targets. So when you're a bear, does Berserk make Mango hit three targets? I think it does, right? Yeah, so depending if you have Lacerate or Mangle on, they'll now have both hit three targets. Which kind of says to me that I thought at one point, because of a future rune, they were going to change around Lacerate and Mangle, so you can get them both. But this says to me that actually, no, that they're keeping things as they are. These spells and talent trees without thought to it when they're first making the game. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it must be really difficult, though. Like, imagine the guy making all these. It was, um... What's his name? Something Jordan, I think. I forget his name now, but, uh... Yeah, make, um, making all these things would have been immensely complicated. Blizz can't afford more than four devs. I mean, there's pictures of the sod dev team. There's, like, two dozen of them or so, about 18 or so. Kevin Jordan, there you go. That's the, that's the fella. He used to stream back at the start of Classic. I don't know if he does it anymore. Interesting guy, though. Very good insight for Classic. Yo, Vigo, what up? But yeah, this would have been so difficult to make. Like, I, I think, can, all things considered, they did a good job for the basis of Classic. Uh, classes, but yeah. Uh, so, Lacerate now hit up to three targets. I, I mean, I guess, but yeah, like, Berserk's on a three-minute cooldown. The... the th you don't, you don't really use your cooldowns for AoE threat. I don't know. It feels like when you're doing dungeons and stuff, you need AoE threat like all the time. You know, you need Consecration, you need Avenger's Shield, you need Divine Storm. You just need these buttons you can press every 30 seconds. Not something that's dependent on a three minute cooldown. Obviously, it's just a buff and it's good. And it gives you more of a choice of being able to pick Mangle or Lacerate as a bear, but it still seems kind of whatever to me, this to be honest. Uh, next for cats. Uh, so Feral Cat has also, much to my surprise, not been doing great this phase. I thought with Tiger's Fury and Berserk, along with, you know, Savage Roar and how they've been looking in phase one, that they'd be doing pretty cool. He wasn't the only one? Oh, right, I see. I, I remember him doing, though, doing the uh, classes, though, and streaming, but interesting to listen to. Yeah, Kevin Jordan used to stream. Uh, so duration of Rip has increased to 16 seconds was 12. So one more tick. Uh, I guess with King of the Jungle and Berserk, you can now re realistically fit Rip into your rotation. And especially against the higher armor targets, Rip is going to be better than Ferocious Bite, I imagine. Uh, they say they'll lower the requirement to get the Ratchet Runes. No, and nobody asked that in any interviews either. I would have asked it, but I went and checked in game and I don't think they have. So unfortunate. And yo, what up, Bryce? So small buff to cats, um, I, I, I don't think this is kind of too much that's noticeable. I think the bosses just have too much armor for melee to be that good. Um, and a bit, you know, one more tick on rip isn't, isn't going to really change much for cats. Yeah, I was hoping they would too. I've got so many ults where I didn't do the ratchet rune. I was like, I'm, I'm just going to hope they change things. And they didn't. I've seen the logs yet. Now, we can look at the logs over the past one day. I was going to do that after we took, uh, check the class changes, but these class changes won't have had time to impact the, uh, the log checks. This is with maintenance. Um, but yeah, so druids. So obviously they nerf your star surge and they gave you that compensation buff for Eclipse. Your next starfire does more damage. And they've basically increased the extra damage from 66% uh, to 80%. 
and apparently corrected a bug, causing this bonus damage to be lower than intended at level 40. They didn't say anything about the spell knockback thing. Is, is that still a thing for Eclipse as Druids? So, like, you, your, your spell knockback just doesn't work? You got to revere to the waylaid supplies? Ugh. Hey, Sparkly Rug, welcome. It's fixed? That's good. Good, good. I didn't see them mention that, but hey, if it's fixed, it's fixed. Because I know people had uh, some problems with that, but they always fix stuff like that. It's, it's like, as long as it's on their radar, it's fine, right? Uh, so Druid's pretty much every spec, minus Resto's, got buffed. Um, but Resto is still pretty much just press Wild Growth, and in between your Wild Growths, you just DPS. From what I can tell, looking at logs at least. Armors in. Do you remember uh, before Noma released and Blizzard were like, yeah, things aren't going to be immune to certain damage types, but they're going to have really high resistances? We just didn't know those really high resistances were going to be armor. Uh, uh, yeah, unfortunate for melee, I guess. So, Dread Free buffs, I think the, the most noticeable one here should be... Probably for Bert and for Boonkin, but we'll see how they pan out because we'll look at past stay logs in a minute and uh, Boonkins have fallen off after the Star Surge nerf in PvE and obviously in PvP. It was more of a PvP change, right? Shaman. So uh, Enhance is also kind of in the bin at the moment. Um, <laughs> it needs help. It needs needs a lot of help. So. The dual wield specialization room now provides 50% bonus damage to your offhand weapon swings. So that's going to be offhand weapon swings from... And that should include a tanks because things like the um, offhand weapon increases for dual wield hunter or for rogue increase the damage of things like raptor strike and mutilate. So if you do have flame tongue on, lava lash has also been buffed and it gains a 50 percent increase so this should double dip basically is what i'm saying uh so it should be 50 percent bonus damage from your offhand swings and 50 percent bonus damage increase from lava lash so this should be like both of these things together hopefully that's that's how i read it uh, but that does mean you need flame tongue in your offhand and not rock biter and uh, obviously rock biter is um it's kind of OP. Oh, is this the correct rank? I think it is, yeah. And it gives 355 attack power, which is... It's just like an absolutely bonkers number to, to, to be able to just passively put on your offhand. But the dual wield shaman identity is going to be getting buffs, so... Hopefully they'll do a bit better. There's so much power in the dual wield spec now. Because you have 10% melee hit, 10% spell hit, storm strike hits with both weapons, 50% bonus damage to your offhand weapon swings, and Lava Lash now gains a 50% increase if you are flame tongue equipped. So it's it's kind of hard to believe you're not going to always be playing some like dual wield spec now in PvE. Uh, with all of these things like combining together. There's just so much power in their dual wield rune. If Hunter gets OP <laughs> gets an OP rune in phase three again. Don't worry, the melee the melee hunter nerfs are on their way, I'm sure. Warriors in shambles every phase, they're not twenty percent above everyone else. They'll be scaling. They were they were kinda mid at the start of phase one and then they uh, the scaling kicked in and they just dominated again. Uh, but yeah, the, the Enhance is not doing so great. Um, so if I get Gnome Regun logs so far, Enhance is, uh, Enhance is literally in the bin as far as specs go. That's over a range of two weeks, so since Gnome has been out, basically. If we look over one day, so very recently, it's still just... Uh, that's not where you want to be. That's not where you want to be. Oh, I'm just boring, it's just Raptor Strike. I mean, that's why I expected it to be. It's Raptor Strike, it's Flanking Strike. The, the abilities come off cooldown, you, ju you just spam them. And that's it, that's the spec. 
Yo, Mass Lucario. Okay, but yeah, I was I was gonna say this actually. Um, regarding druids. This is pre-nerf to Star Surge. So they're like the you know, the middle of the table. This isn't bad uh, necessarily. Uh, this isn't a bad place to be in. It's kind of like okay. It's you know, it's it's not it's not like terrible down here. It's not like potentially OP up here. It's just okay. Do you know what I mean? And then post nerf. Whoa. Now that they're starting to dip a bit, you know. Shamanistic Rager. Yeah, Shamanistic Rager double rock bite, it seems like. It seems like almost an oversight um, because of how much mana you can regenerate through it with double rock bite. None of the other imbues are anywhere near that good. Ellie Shaman's up there. Yeah, again, Ellie Shaman's been climbing. Look at Ellie Shaman at the start. At the start of this phase, last time I did a, a stream, I was saying I, 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 Ellie Shaman was like down here and now it's moved up. And that made sense to me. Ellie Shaman should be good with all the buffs they've got. <clears throat> or uh, talents and stuff, I should say. That Fire Mage as well has been climbing. Not bad, not bad. Um, also, the proc chance of Maelstrom weapon is now roughly 50% higher when your main hand weapon or your two hand weapon is imbued with Wind Fury weapon. So, I, I don't know how fast you are generating Maelstrom stacks already, but 50% higher to me is, that sounds like a big number, you know? Uh, so yeah, this is a, and especially because you can proc, um, Lava Burst with this too, which is going to be pretty great. I have to imagine you Lava Burst does, what, a six second cooldown? So this is going to be for Lava Burst off of cooldown, more or less, if that's not already possible. The old Catatonic Season Discovery thing's pretty fun. Yeah, I've had a good time. Uh, so Shaman, Enhancement, um, Buffs, Warranted Buffs, Needed Buffs. We'll see what happens with that. Mage! Holy crap, Mage has got a, probably the best quality of life buff this patch. Conjure Water rank 5 will now conjure a full stack of 20 with each cast instead of 2. There you go. If you're a Mage, uh, oof, that's a big W for you. You went from 10 casts per stack to 1. Damn. Now, if, if, you, if you ever had an excuse pre-raid of being like, oh, sorry, guys, you know, I can only make two at once, right? I can only give the healers water. Now it's going to be like, okay, everyone wants water. It's pretty big. Um, on a completely unrelated note, uh, Blizz, you know, if this is pretty much mage table, what you put in the game now. Can you put in, um, can you put in um, Well of Souls? Because, I don't know, we're doing some Gnomer Gun yesterday, and uh, some of the bosses... There's a bit of progression to do on them if you're doing them for the first time and handing out one health stone at the moment sucks. Or oh, the, uh, the uh, one health stone at a, uh, at a time, I mean. And we already have summoning portal. I think Solwell. Do it. I, yeah. I mean, Solwell would be nice. Obviously, this is great quality of life uh, for mages. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of gold, a lot of time. And, uh, yeah, just general positive thing. If Mage is your main, very happy about that one. And Paladin. Uh, so, okay, so this is, like, part of the reason why I decided to level my Mage next. My Mage? My Paladin. So Art of War now reduces the mana cost of Exorcism and Holy Shock by 80% when active. So in other, re in other words, you... You get a melee critical strike, and then your next one of these two spells is going to cost 80% less. Which pretty much deletes all the potential mana issues this ability would have had. Or this rune, I should say. So, I don't know. The, the shocker in things sounds kind of interesting. Hot swapping runes to armor seems, doesn't seem right to you. Seems unintended. You should see what high-end PvPers are doing. They full on have like a, a plethora of items and like swap macros for different situations and different matchups. Like, I think in PvE it's pretty like casual what people tend to do. In PvP, 
people can go wild with gear swapping. It's it's a whole different world at high end in PvP. But yeah, they 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 want Shocker. I want Shocker in. Like, imagine if Shocker in's a legitimate DPS. That'd be hilarious. Uh, and also, Beacon Light was mana cost has been greatly reduced. So I I didn't know it was super expensive anyway. But if you play a Holy Paladin, you're refreshing this on cooldown. So that's nice. And these changes are also active at the moment. So if you do have a Paladin, you have Art of War, you want to try out the Shocker in meme, uh, go for it. Um, it, this this is active right now. Shockadin melee hybrid. The biggest problem with the Shockadin build at the moment is you have Sheaf of Light and um, what's the other one? It's like Sheaf of Light and something else which gives you loads of power on the same rune. Uh, oh, um, Infusion of Light, yeah, yeah, for the, the, the extra damage and stuff. Why the Paladin changes get activated already? I don't know. I, I guess they could just do them already, so they did them. Sheaf of Light, so good. I, I, I hovered over some guy uh, this morning who had Sheaf of Light active, and it was giving him a, like... I think it was like 190 spell power. And I was like, dude, that's crazy. That's so much spell power. So it, it seems as though it's going to be kind of hard not to take Sheaf of Light, especially when it scales. And they give increased duration instead of uh, constantly refreshing it. Yes, I mean, I imagine you can find a bit of downtime in fights if you just put it back up. But yeah, it just it kind of is what it is. Uh, so those are our buffs. So Druids, every spec except Resto gets buffed. Shaman, Enhancement, both identities buffed. Mages, great quality of life buff. Paladin, they, they're, they're pushing the Shockadin meme hard. Need gear to make it work. You need infusion. I thought you would, yeah. It seems very gear reliant, but um, this uh, this guy right here is going to be a Shockadin. Also, I want to build some like dungeon farming set. And... Um, one of the new enchants, this thing right here, it reflects 9 damage whenever you're struck in melee. This already would have been great in vanilla by itself, and I don't know if they're going to put other things in the game like it. Because imagine this on a Demon Forge breastplate, and then you've got your Skull Flame Shield, your Essence of Pure Flame, um, your Razor Gauntlets, all those other things, right? Where's Skull Flame gone? Ah, uh, not Skull Flame, their chest. Demon Forge. Plate. Yeah, like this thing, for example. Ooh. Scaling's horrible. All oh, right, damn. The rest of the best healer. I think they're, they're definitely up there. What's your phase to experience been so far? It is pretty good. Uh, let me show you something. Wait, let me um, hide that real quick. I just need to hide some uh, super secret information. I'm going to show you something. So I was doing Gnomerigan yesterday. And you know like all these talks people are having about, you know, this class is OP in PvP, this class is OP. Um, See, so yeah, I was doing Gnomerigan. And uh, you can see I'm on the Warlock here. Now, bring, bring this to your attention. Uh, we don't have a Fire Mage in the group, so I don't have Improved Scorch. I don't have Power Infusion. And I don't have World Buffs. I've got all the other Consumes. I have my Shadow and Flame active, so that's 10% Fire Damage. I have Incinerate, that's 25% fire damage. I put up Lake of Fire, so that's 40% fire damage. Given all that, how much do you think I can crit for with a Chaos Bolt? Because I literally can't believe how hard this class can hit. Like, I, I, I think they might nerf Fire Warlock a little bit, because this... Uh, where is it? 3.2? Oh, if I have more buffs, I'll be able to. There we go, Lake of Fire active, Immolate. I don't, I don't even know if it's worth using Immolate. Chaos Bolt. And, uh, okay, given all the buffs, I have active and 2.8k. A 2.8k Chaos Bolt at level 40 without improved Scorch, without Power Infusion, without World Buffs. Like, holy crap. Oh, by the way, I don't have any Phase, th uh, phase 2 gear at all on at the moment. I literally just have Phase 1 gear on. And I just crit for 2,800. 
Isn't Firelock the only good lock DPS? Uh, yes, they're miles ahead of other lock DPSs. They're, they're like, there's no point playing other stuff. And then what happens after you hit 2.8k as a Warlock? Uh, you over aggro. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the problem with it. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, and I pop my boots, drop threat, goes back on the tank, and I have to AFK a bit. Yeah, so unlucky. Improved Scorch about 3.2k. Yeah, um, imagine PI as well, and well buffs. Like the well buff, it gives you 42 spell damage. And if I had the goggles as well, which have like 50 spell damage on use, I'd be able to get another like bunch of damage out of them, so. Destro locks in this phase are going to be doing some absolutely disgusting crits. And even Hellfire on AoE with Lake of Fire and Incinerate was ticking for about 191. Which on mob packs with like half a dozen mobs is... it's... It's crazy. Warlock is amazing in Gnomeregan right now. Like, the the straight up OP. I've said it in the past, I wouldn't be surprised if they took some damage out of the whole... Um, fire modifiers that Warlock gets through Lake of Fire or Incinerate. Uh, but yeah, 2.8k. Without will, will buffs and improve Scorch or PI. Damn. I was getting PI after that. After that fight, I started getting PI, but... Yeah. Uh, and Nomer Gun's a fun raid, though. The, the first kind of, like, three bosses are kind of free. And the last three are actually quite difficult. They're very easy to wipe on. It's definitely a mechanical step up from... Uh, from BFD, for sure. Tank Warlock is Hellfire's amazing in SM. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to do it myself, but um, the Warlock build with a Hellfire and you take um, Intensity and then get a lock, uh, get a Paladin or something. Isn't Noma pretty long? I think we ended up clearing. It's a bit over two hours, but we wiped a bunch on the second to last boss and the last boss. Where are you from? I am from Britain. Antarctic accent. Yeah, pretty close. There's so much. There's a lot of trash, but a lot of it's optional. To be honest, right? I actually, I, I didn't mind the trash in Noma because it has enough health where you can actually do some AoE and feel good about doing AoE. Which obviously isn't going to be great for every class because, um, you know, not every class can AoE. But I'm playing a lock and their AoE is great, so I felt, I felt amazing in Noma. And uh, it's better than the BFD. The BFD, tra BFD trash is actually so bad. Like, you run into the, the sorceresses and they're frosting over you and you run into the next one and they're frosting over you. And they all had no health, and literally anyone could just hit them, and it was fine. And I, nah, the BFG trash was actually so bad. I, enjoy, I enjoyed the Noma as a whole, though. It was fun. Oh, Lady Kelsarim, what up? What up? Uh, so those are our buffs. Um, as for deeps at the moment, um, so obviously over a range of a week, this is pretty much since B, uh, Noma has released. The Malay Hunter has been kind of top of the ranks. So far unnerfed, but I can see them getting nerfed relatively soon, would not be surprised. Uh, Shadow Priest are obviously doing great still. Um, again, I think Shadow of Death's going to be nerfed because it can crit for like 1.3k in PvP as an instant cast spell. And yes, it reflects damage, but that's that's just too much. Um, it's too much for an instant cast. The Warlock has hit 4k without Scorch, holy! He must be absolutely stacked then. Damn. That's incredible. 4K. Imagine 4K at level 40. I played Locke the whole way through Classic in uh, Vanilla. Uh, 2019, not original. And like in Nax gear, you wouldn't hit that hard. These runes are crazy. And you know, that's what they'll do for another raid next phase. We don't know. A lot of people seem to like Sunken Temple. I don't know. I remember in one of the, the interviews Blizzard did, they said part of the reason why they picked Gnomeregan was it because it, it felt as though it was a space that fitted enough people um, into a raid, if that makes sense. Like, it's it's got a lot of big open areas that you can, you know, go into with a, a bigger group than a five-man dungeon comp. I don't know if Sunken Temple has that. So it has the, um, it's got like a lot of very narrow corridors. Like I've said this in the past, like it's got a bunch of narrow corridors. You know the puzzle rooms and the rooms where you have to kill the troll channelers? The whole like area around that, the circle's very narrow and enclosed. 
But then afterwards, you have the area with all the green dragons, which is, like, huge and expansive, right? So maybe, maybe they could rework it, but um, I don't know. I, I do want to see BFD made into a raid, though. Um, not BFD, BRD, Black Rock Depths, not Black Fathoms Depths. It was intentionally made to be a major city, but they didn't have time to finish it. And they never have. Yeah. The gnomes have never returned home. Can you imagine? Yeah, the priest areas would be very small. Can you imagine if they reworked the, the puzzle thing with the statues? If they remove the channels. Yeah, they'd have to do something. And... Possibly remove the requirement to clear every single dragon in the raid to do Aranicus. Can you imagine that on a raid? It's like, okay guys, we want to go to Aranicus. Oh wait, we have to spend 20 mi minutes clearing every single dragon. Because otherwise they're going to run up in the fight and just kill us. Is it Mechagon it? Uh, Mechagon's Mechanomes, which... I don't know, maybe that's got something to do with it, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, in terms of DPS over the one day changes, uh, we've seen Fire Mages creeping up already. Fire Mage is like, people are, I think people are kind of sleeping on it. Um, Fire Mage got a lot of powerful talents, a lot of powerful runes. They're doing huge amounts of damage and they're actually, they're creeping up on melee hunters as well, which is like wild. Now Warlocks again could very well see nerfs to their fire damage multipliers. DPS Priest, I think when you take some damage out of Shadowhead Death, they'll fall down like one or two places and they'll probably be okay. Uh, Elemental Shaman, I think they're doing fine, happy to see where they're at. And pretty much everything below that is like, there's potential issues with melee classes. Um, it's, you can obviously tell how OP melee Hunter is when they do entirely physical damage. And they're the best melee by such an enormous margin that they're, they're this far ahead of the next melee class. See, uh, but melee hunter big OP. Now you've got warriors. They they started off mid in phase one. They'll probably scale. Balance druid just got some buffs. They should move up a bit. Enhancement just got some buffs. Uh, DPS paladin has not received. Actually, it has received buffs to art of war. But then, is it art of war or sheaf of light? No, it's not. You can get both. Still, I don't think that's going to be like a huge deal. Um, being able to save some mana on exorcism. I don't think that's going to make much of a big deal. I don't know what you do to DPS Paladins to bring them up. It just feels as though... I don't know, they, they just don't do enough damage in PvE. But then you go in PvP and they're actually still quite good. They, they do reasonable damage. It's, it's weird. Paladins are looking at shocking in builds. Like this guy right here. Ooh. We got some weapon speed normalized. There's a new meta for single target now. Ooh. Ooh, what are you doing? What's the news? Buff on Crusaders. Is Crusader Strike still 75% weapon damage? Because that's kind of crap, to be honest. Huh? Crusader. Eh? Crusader. Strike. There we go. Wait, I'm logged in on the pal then. Yeah, it's 75. <laughs> I'm literally logged in on a paladin. I'm trying to look it up. What is he doing? I think they could put this to 100 and it'd be okay. Yo, Sarkwa, what up? I'm good. My day has been great, thank you. And uh, I'm just checking through some of the class changes and stuff now. But, uh, again, I've, I've, I've said it before, but this whole Shockadin build, if they have, like, something properly going for it, you build Martyrdom, go with Attack Speed Weapon, uh, go Crusader Strikes, there's nothing else to take there. I think here, Sheaf of Light gives so much spell power that you can't take Infusion, and Art of War's giving you resets anyway, so you just go Art of War, and then Legs, you go Exorcist. And then you just go full down the holy tree. You take five here, five here. 
I guess conch for the AoE, why not? That, lay on hands, illumination, because you have to. Um, probably... Yeah, you can get improved wisdom, I guess, why not? And then you go that into that or something. Maybe, yeah, maybe you could even play this as prop pally. Like if you're a prop pally and you have... You probably wouldn't take martyrdom, would you? I mean, it's okay for the mana regen and stuff, but... You might be able to go either... Because you, if you've got Arts of War, you're using a faster weapon, right? So you probably go... If you're using a fast weapon, maybe Horn of Lordaeron, play Utility. And here you go... I'm not sure, actually. Hmm... Prop Pally good. I played with a Prop Pally last night, um, and yeah, the, the, the AoE threat was exceptionally good. Like, I was I was playing a Warlock, I was full sending Incinerate into Lake of Fire, Hellfire, and after I'd done like six or seven ticks, I would start to pull aggro, but yeah, the, the threat was great. Holy Priest, this Priest, Pally or Druid for your first healer ever. Ooh. I'd probably say Priest because they have the most versatility and they've, they're typically very good in vanilla and they've been good so far, so I would say Priest. Paladins have a taunt? They do, yes. If you pick up the Hand of Reckoning rune, uh, it makes it so you have a new ability that allows you to taunt. You take Honk and rest in prop. Really? Rest in prop? So I guess you go... Do you play Sheaf of Light and just do Divine Strength? I feel like that's right to do, isn't it? In fact, both both of these are kind of bad. You just do five there, five there, and then... Like, I wouldn't take Devotion or I'd go Retor or Conk situationally. But Readout's like kind of met as well, right? I don't know if you need this, then that, and the kings. At least you could get kings. Kings is good. Except sometimes you don't have a hunter. We didn't have a hunter last night, so we didn't have kings. Which kind of is what it is sometimes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it, it feels kind of right to do. I know, I think uh, Paladin's talent tree is very interesting. I've always liked it a lot. And, um... Yeah, just the AoE farming potential as well. Like I was saying, the uh, especially with th things like this new enchant, Retrocutioner, nine reflected damage. You don't have kings? Oh, you just... What if you don't have a hunter, though? It is only one talent point. Hmm. Most hun I mean, every hunter will have lines. It's just, do you always have a hunter? Last night, we didn't have a hunter. What if you're playing solo? Would you like to have kings when you're solo? I don't know, I think you would. Yo, Arthur, so I, I did answer on YouTube as well. I saw your question. Um, I'd recommend Priest if it's your first healer. Priest has versatility and they, they've always been great. So yeah, Priest. If you're on your horde but you love to play Paladin. Yeah. I know, it's just one of those vanilla things. I'm kind of okay with them being separate. Let's you, uh, let you see the, the, how green the grass is on the other side, really, doesn't it? Might works with sheaf. Ooh. True. Yeah, true. At the moment. Not the moment, though. Kings is kings, right? It'll scale. He swaps you. Ah, yeah, yeah. No worries then, Arthas. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Ali has better music compared to Horde. I'm not going to say you're right, but uh, you're, you're right. And the early game questing's better. Look, I, I mean, I, I don't mind the Barons, but it goes on, doesn't it? The Crusader Seal. Ooh, interesting. Oh, the, the actual seal of the Crusader. Oh, I didn't even realize that. That's actually so cool. 99 melee attack power and I'm rank 3. Yo! 
So, you, what, you put Crusader on to proc Sheaf of Light, and then you swap back to another seal. Interesting. Hold us better late game. The, yeah, Horde, Horde's mid... I don't know about late game. Mid game, yes. Yo, Ron. Shammies are fun. You're always telling me... You're telling me not to play Horde when I'm on Horde. I'm on Alliance now. I better see at least one Pogchamp from you. Thank you. Over 250 spell power. That's crazy. That's more than I have on my main. And that is straight up crazy amounts of spell power. Oh, it doesn't work. Damn it. Always when I think I'm on something. I love when you play Ali. Okay, all right. We're good then today. We're good. Um, but yeah, was there anything else I wanted to say here? Um, I think that was about it for looking at the class related stuff. You do that? Yeah, I, I do tend to play more Alliance, for sure. Uh, so next on the chopping block, I think, uh, there will be buffs. I think they'll do some kind of buff to DPS Paladin. This is just, it's just not good uh, at the moment. It's in the bin. Uh, could use buffs. I know it's, it's still good in PvP, but... We'll see what they do. The PvP meta is already incredibly bursty. Enhancement's been buffed. Balance has been buffed. Feral's been buffed. Warrior, I just want to say, like, get some gear and see how it looks, and, th and then we'll see what happens. If I was Blizzard, I'd be super scared of buffing Warrior. Give it, like, two more resets. We'll see where they're at. Rogue, similar story. And everything here on upwards. Arcane's fine. Elemental's fine. Uh, Priest, just Shadow Air Death's going to get nerfed. Warlock, your fire damage multipliers might get nerfed from Lake of Fire Incinerate. Would not be surprised to see either of them. Fire Mage is probably a bit of a sleeper OP. Um, they just, they absolutely clap. In, in, in the squishy as anything in PvP, like they fall over if somebody looks at them. But then again, they can just, they just put out crazy damage. I'm not sure what you'd, t uh, you'd touch for Fire Mage if you were going to do something. Um, but yeah, one to keep your eye on for sure. A melee hunter, I think they just, I think they might need to just increase their cooldowns a bit. Um, and perhaps lower the, uh, lower the damage from the dual spec rune on the offhand from 50% to like 25. Uh, bring them back in line a bit. So I think if melee hunters were using two handers, they would actually be okay. It's the dual, it's the dual wield rune, which is busted as hell. Because you don't see any melee hunters with a two-hander, do you? Well, not in PvE. In PvP, maybe you do, and they're good enough. Reduce the armor in Noma. Yeah, the whole armor thing's like, it just hits all the melee, which, is, again, it's like testament to how overpowered melee hunter is. And Frost Mage is like... I, I don't know. Um, you, it's kind of playable for, like, farming. Not like Frost Mage as a spec using frost spells but frost as a talent tree we're down to ice barrier it's still good for farming it's probably okay for pvp just because it gives you defensive options and the meta is so incredibly burst heavy right now uh, but for pve i think honestly like i'm playing a dps warlock right now i i'm kind of okay with having a spec that does well if affliction was like mid of the table i'd be like oh that's nice I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play Destruction because it does more damage. But, you know what, Mages has choice. Um, so I think I think they're fine. I think Frost is kind of just not really going to be a PvE identity um, from what I can tell here. Yeah, Affliction's not on the list. Uh, DPS. Yeah, they just don't even consider it a DPS spec. It's not even listed on Warcraft logs whatsoever. Mages have all three. Hunters have melee and uh, marksmanship. Warlock, your destruction, or you're just probably doing terrible damage. I, I don't even know what affliction looks like. Fire and frost. It's a living, living flame bomb and regen. But yeah, I mean they're runes though. Do you know what I mean? Like frost is an actual specialization more than just a rune package. It's like, you're going fire, you're using fire runes, and you're taking fire as a spec. When you're going arcane, you're taking arcane runes, and you're going arcane as a spec. Frost, it's like, it, it just doesn't do that. You can take frost as a spec, but then you're using, like, fire runes to support it. 
and frost is just for improved blizzard um you know double block double nova through cold snap all that kind of stuff uh, also marksman hunter's uh, pretty garbage um i'm expecting again i'm expecting melee to be nerfed might need to take a look at marksman um it i don't know um i think they could buff sniper training in some way i think the way it currently works is bad where you have to stand still to get like 10 percent crit that's just kind of garbage probably use a rework on that rune and maybe increase the weapon damage scaling a bit i would be careful on increasing weapon damage scaling because if there's some like crazy weapon they can get they might suddenly become crazy good The new boomies. Yeah, this is just a one-day look, so you, your Starfire did just get buffed. From 66% um, bonus damage to 80%. So you'll, you'll move up a little bit here. You have Frost not to fall over when people look at in PvP. Yeah, I mean, Frost Barrier, your wards, Mana Barrier, they block a decent amount of damage. It's just the PvP meta is extremely burst-heavy right now. I feel what they should have done is... Whoa. On the busting nerfs come with the regional reset. So if you're in America on the Tuesday, and if you're British or in EU, they'll be on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I was going to say what they should do with the PvP sets is for level 40, I feel like they should have put some tier set here. Like a three or four piece tier set that just gave you a bunch of stamina. So if you did want to do the event and gear up for PvP, you'd be able to just have a set that has a, just a lot of stamina on so you can live through stuff. So our health bars just feel too low compared to the amount of damage that's going out right now. They certainly want nerf stuff and more or less buff things instead. Uh, yeah, but there may be some outliers, um, which, you know, we'll, we shall see what they end up being. Some of the spec variation is bad. Warlock only having one viable spec and Frost sucking walls. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, Demonology just isn't a DPS talent tree in Classic. You'd have to... You'd ha you basically have to put Felguard in the game and then put a talent in the Demonology tree to force you to go into Demonology to make Felguard good. Uh, like, you'd have to put something at the bottom here, like... Get improved Spellstone, combine it with this, and put a talent here, say saying your fell guard does crazy damage that's the only way you're going to make this a dps tree uh, an affliction it's just missing dots critting and stuff so it's an unstable affliction as well probably um so yeah it's just not going to be a thing at the moment only sl right now i respect on my warlock after raid uh to a farming spec where i took i, I decided to go and prove imp for some reason I took this, then that, then this, and then I think I went like this. I went this, and like, again, I regret, I should have just put all these talent points here down into Shadow Mastery, and it would have been so much better. Like, I was trying to get scaling from my imp uh, through this and demonic knowledge, but it's just, it just sucks. Like, this talent tree is garbage, genuinely. It's just a bit of support. A DS room will be best at 60. With the way we're looking at the moment, there's no way that you're not playing some variation of Ruin. Uh, if Chaos, Bo Chaos Bolt's hitting over 3,000 crits right now, uh, so it's going to scale out uh, like into oblivion. I mean, you have to spend like 10 talent points for 15% mana and health on your demons. It's just... It's so bad. Yeah, Warlocks, we're going to be playing... Like, in, the, in Raid at the moment, for Locks, you play... Uh, you... I don't think you're going through Shadow Bolt. Yeah, that... Um, I actually don't take Shadow Burn. Because basically, I, I just I just don't like the ability. Because I'm going fire spec, and I think it just costs way too much mana. So I, I actually don't take shadow burn. I know that, and then just one an imp. You possibly could just go 
five into improved MLA, but one in imp I think does a little a little bit extra. And if you have really fast kill times, like you're a bunch of absolute pompers, you might be able to do this, but my imp was going oom. And I didn't I didn't get the trinket from STB yet. Um this thing. Which obviously this this trinket's really good by the way. It'll give you ten more spell power as the uh, warlock. And it gives your imp so much more mana. Well, imp has the imp over conflag. Yeah, I'm surprised that conflag wasn't better. The thing is, incinerate as a filler spell is so good that you don't want to have to like waste the globals and like consuming this and then getting a new a new MLA up. If they put a rune in the game that said, you know. Immolate doesn't consume Kong flag. Maybe, maybe. Wish you like the fight. You just want to play Shadow? Yeah, I think. I mean, I play Shadow all of the time, apart from raiding. Like the rest of the time, if I'm level, if I'm just like out in the old open world doing stuff, um, I'll have. Do I take? I yeah, I'll probably take Nightfall. And then two, three, and I've got a spare point. I think I should be above that, and then that. Honestly, I, I don't even use Dark Pact. I heal so much, and Dark Pact just like is so spammy. I don't take it most of the time. Where else could I put a point? I've probably just got a point to waste here. Um, I don't even know what I put it in. Improve Shadow Bolt. Maybe your Nightfall crits, and you get four percent more damage. But yeah, I, I don't know about Dark Pact. You just heal so much; it feels like you don't need it. But yeah. We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to do a bit of leveling on the Paladin. I'm going to be right back real quick, one sec, and then we shall continue onwards, okay? I will be RB. Why, hello there. Right, let's get a few levels, shall we? Because uh, I don't remember, there's quite a bit of XP between levels 25 and 40. You can subjugate demons on Metalox. You used to be able to subjugate them for five minutes, and they've changed it to 10 seconds now. 
And you know what? Their reasoning was funny. They said, we don't want CC to last that long, essentially. And it's like, oh, but you know, we can have a we can have a rogue or mage literally stop you from playing the game for a minute straight. That's fine. But you know, subjugate demon? Whoa, were you crazy? I guess you can banish them as well, right? Well, you could banish um, trees during uh, TBC and stuff. I did look up some of the runes as well for the Paladin, see what I can get in the future. And uh, yeah, I think... I don't know, what, what do you guys feel about the new runes? Like, are they at the correct level when you're getting them? Because I feel like you have to be a level 30 to 34 before you can get most runes. Is that like too late or... The FD boss experience is offended by rest XP? Ooh, Yo, that's a really good point. Yeah, I suppose it would be, right? Because you're just killing mobs. Nice. I'll have to do that then for sure. Yeah, I don't know about getting a group on this guy because I was... <laughs> He's still got his Christmas hound. The festive season is over, but nobody's told him about it. So I know my warlock at least. It felt as though uh, there were a lot of runes in Desolus. And I was kind of hoping to avoid Desolus. It's, it's not my favorite zone in the game. But you know, I went over there, I got my runes. Did what I had to do. Uh, I need some of these great crocolisks. Giant, sorry, not great. Terribly sorry, crocolisk. Yo, a feral druid out in the wild. Sheaf of light sucks to get two hours of farming. One. And oh, there's some icon in the way. One farming point to get it. Hmm. The longest one on Warlock was. I mean, it was the Dark Riders room, to be honest, by a long way. The Dark Riders one and. The Dark Riders was demonic knowledge as well, which is like, it's not very exciting, but it's our, be our best rune this phase because it's just so much spell damage. Uh, with this new phase, this mean BFD is now useless in terms of progression, or people still treat it as a one-time dungeon. Uh, if you're leveling and you're not like leveling super fast, it's worth doing for experience. I think a full clear without rested XP gives you about 23 to 25k XP. Um, I did that on my another character a bit ago. On Alter at Highlands. Oh, the, um, yeah, I was reading it earlier, the Divine Inter Intervention one. You just need to find somebody to res you though. That do be sounding kind of nice. Never go womb again. I like the sound of that a lot. Um, what's it called? Guarded by the light. Somebody's killed all the crocolis. Alright, we'll do some sailors. Any sailors? I was kind of expecting it to be a bit less busy now. Still pr a lot of people here. See, on my Warlock, I didn't have this problem. I, I just handed my quests in. And, uh... I did a BFD later on. And then I just went and soloed Stockades for a while. Literally spam. I'll, I'll go and do that as soon as I'm level 30 then. Oh, Cascade, the 100 bits. Thank you. The beard, the voice, the hat. I love you. Let's go. My man. Thank you. Now I appreciate you. Very generous. Can't quest on your shaman. Is this a can't quest because of PvP or can't quest because your class sucks kind of thing? Which one? It could be either. 
I'm kind of looking forward to playing Shaman as well. I think after Paladin, I might go Shaman. I wanted to do Hunter and play Melee Hunter, but I'm so convinced it will be nerfed that I don't want to, like... The thing is that the dual, the dual wield spec runes are the Dark Rider one, right? Too many people? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it just sucks. Try and get a layer. See if anyone in your guild's on a different layer. And uh, hopefully get out of the Death Ball. Titan's Grip when... Man, I was so sure about Titan's Grip. I thought, oh, they, they've removed the warrior requirement from automatic crowd pummeler. Surely this means Titan's Grip. And uh, no, as it would turn out. For it is the exact same as 25. I have to say, the warrior runes are um, underwhelming. Like, I, I get why they've done it, because they're, they're scared to, like, put too much power into Warrior. They've seen what happened in Phase 1, and they're being they're being cautious, which I think is fine to do. But, like, I read some of the runes, it's like, Focus Rage. Your abilities cost three less rage, and I was like, damn, this, this makes my Warlock runes look exciting. <laughs> Nearly. I don't need to fear, I think I'll just kill him here. Oh, Close. Might get Might of Menafil and Hand of Dragon last phase. Ooh, can you imagine? When can undead be paladins? Oh, it's just some debuff from this quest. You you get you get this curse and it turns you into a skeleton. A little skelly boy. You get two slam runes, see? Of course everyone loves slam. You get two runes for it. And if I, I, I don't know that the day to mine runes for next phase also seem kind of like meh for warrior. I don't know. It's just I think after phase one, Blizzard are very cautious about over buffing melee. It's like with all the new crafted items, right? I'm, I'm sure you've seen the updates, um, but if you haven't, like uh, blacksmithing, these items are all new for season of discovery, and they all give spell power every single one. Or healing power. Um, tailoring, these all give spell power and they all change for Season of Discovery. Leatherworking, these all give spell power. Dungeons, uh, let's see which bosses, updated this. Like across the board, Blizzard kind of realized that, huh, casters suck. <laughs> um, we're going to need to give them a lot more gearing options. Level BS got. Zero upgrades. I guess you, you get the goggles and um, yeah, that's going to be it, isn't it? But anyway, no gun last night. We had some warriors and they were doing pretty good, um, especially on AoE of Ravager and sweeping strikes and stuff. They were, they were pulling off some pretty respectable damage, to be honest. Um, but yeah, on the last two or three bosses specifically, it was like just all casters, really. Not so much on the last boss. The last boss, the you have to do so much running around to like click the buttons that we couldn't do too well. Can we hope for? I think Blizzard had a concrete plan with the runes. Yeah, it's um, it's probably frustrating for them, right? They're seeing people like discover the runes and they're like, this element of the class is clearly missing, and Blizzard are gonna be sitting there like, yeah, we know, we're gonna fix it. You need to wait for three months until the next phase because we can't just like splurge out every single change we have planned in one patch. Do you know what I mean? Love the game so much. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. It's classic. Don't be, it really is. Heal up a bit. Oh, we need to kill this guy too. Not before I get more breath, though. Don't want to drown. That is not a good look. Whoa. That was my first class in WoW. Well. My first class in WoW, well, and I, I started playing in... I actually don't know 100% when I started playing. It was before TBC. Like, before... Two... 
TBC was January 2007. I think I started in like late 0506. And the first class I ever made was a on my official subscription, of course. Because prior to that, I had a starter edition. Um, we could you could play any class to level 20, and then your experience would be locked. So I don't remember what I played then, but when I finally convinced my mom to pay for a subscription, the first class I ever made was a female night elf hunter. And yeah. Soloed a lot of content on the Hunter. In, van in vanilla, when I first started, I played female Night Elf Hunter. And I also had a female human priest. And they're a shadow priest. And I love playing my shadow priest so much. They were so much fun. Great choice. Yeah. I guess a lot of people would have gone with a dwarf hunter after seeing the cinematic, you know, with the, the, the bear looking over Ironforge. Very iconic. But um, I don't know. I, I like the elven kind of theme to the zones they have and the luck and everything and I was like damn I'm gonna roll this yo magic pants I'm doing good hope you are well you're always a male night elf hunter hey not so far apart then hey man of culture absolutely yeah you're on the Legolas uh, hopefully you didn't call yourself Legolas though right Oh, good. Your old magic pan to the gift as well. Thank you so much. Very generous of you to do so. And pull me finger. Man rocks up in YouTube, heads over to Twitch and drops the prime. Absolute legend. Yo, thank you so much, man. Thank you both. But then work on the superior spec. Yeah, library. Look, I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to quite uh, be as good as this class is in Wrath of the Lich King, but we're going to be shockadins, okay? None of this uh, smiting and all that stuff. We're going to be pressing holy shock and we're going to be having a good time. Hopefully, maybe, potentially. Knifey, our lovers. Through and through. Uh, what do I need here? So I need... I don't, I've, I haven't killed any cursed marines right I need to go over here. Sona, hello, how are you doing? Oh, again, thank you, Magic Pants. That is super generous of you. Are there no Marines? Huh? Wait. Oh, he's got one, but that's him over there. First Marine, please come this way. It's weird how I find the grinding classic fun because you don't like grinding. I kind of like it to some extent. I've always played very grindy games. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's never really felt like a grind to me necessarily. So before playing World of Warcraft, I played RuneScape and I was... Um, let's just say I'd wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. and then go downstairs. When it was like in winter and it was freezing and I would go and train like experience in RuneScape. For, for what it means to anyone here, I go to experiments for like about 20k strength XP an hour. And uh, I got to 99 strength on two different accounts. So uh, I'm not adverse to a grind, but yeah, these, these days I'm not quite up for that level of grind. Well, it's fun though. The thing is about questing, and I've always enjoyed questing, is that it mixes stuff up a lot. You go from different zone to different zone, and the kind of the, the more you do vanilla questing, the more enjoyable it gets because you start to like see different ways to get through things. Let's check out Melvor Idol. Track it's bought a while back. Game's just like Idol RuneScape. Huh. I've never heard of that. Jacket's just got sold though. Um, 
They got bought out by another company, I believe. Server. Realm. There you go. And wild growth through and through. Uh, seems like Art of War guarded by the light does the most damage by now, but Shocker didn't sound more fun. It does, yeah, but it, it kind of doesn't come online to level 40 either, because, you know, you, you don't have Divine Shock. Oh, Holy Shock, I should say. First Marine. Most efficient streaming quester. There we go. Wild Growth, oh yeah. All my characters on Wild Growth, every single one. I was considering rolling on PvP servers for a bit, but... Mm, I feel like I did PvP servers in uh, 2019 on Classic. I keep pressing the wrong button for command. I haven't played this character in a while. Like, I played on a... I played in, in Classic in 2019. I played on Gehenna's the whole way through, and it was like... Uh, Probably one of the sweatiest PvP servers there was. It like had all the big private server guilds on it and stuff and... Yeah, I, I feel like I got my fill kind of thing, you know? And I'm happy to do my nice chill questing on PvE and be happy with it. Especially when you do as much alts and stuff as I do, it tends to be the case on PvP servers where... That people have a main, right? Nothing against them for doing this because it's it's part of the server, right? Like if you roll on these types of server, it it just is what it is. You can't complain about it. But you know, you play your main, you do the raid, you get all your gear, you get your professions. You're like, hmm, I'm bored. What shall I do? I'm going to do world PvP. And then they come across my ass that's like level 32 in STV, and they just send me to the graveyard, and there's nothing I can do about it. And uh, yeah, if I was on the receiving end on half a dozen different characters, I would. I just wouldn't be able to tolerate that. I get bored of it super quick. Terrorize low levels. Yeah, it's just people that want something to do. And uh, on PvP servers, you uh, you are the you do the content, which is PvP, or you become the content. You have the RP as well. Yeah, I like the RP aspect. I just feel like, especially if you're on Crusader Strike NA, it's um, a lot of the uh, and the streamer culture came to that server, and I, I don't think that mixes particularly well with RP. Um, maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong. Yo, Bron Lock, what up? Uh, which I, I don't think that's true for Crusader Strike EU, but uh, yeah, I don't know what you're playing. I keep pressing the wrong. I usually have Command on 2, and I've changed it to Divine Storm for some reason. Giant Wetlands Crocolisk. Am I going to get some more Crocolisks here, or are they just being camped on this layer? Ooh. Up to a bunch more layers now. Any Crocolisks. If there's no Crocolisks, then we go hand in and do something else. Yeah, I think that's just uh, a busy layer, huh? Uh, Locks Flame P1. Yeah, a lot. Living Flame is like. It's nice if you're already in, like through the door, but if you're not already on the server, then you can't really get on it. And it's especially bad if you want to play with multiple people. Like, I've heard while stream many times over that I'm on Locks Flame. My friend wants to play one of these servers to going to get unlocked and. If they're still, they were locked the whole way through phase one. I don't think they ever got unlocked. And if they're still locked now, then hope is slim that they will be unlocked anytime soon. I could have this one for SXP. Uh, yeah, I've got it. I think you need it to have to be like the active quest or something. I just, um, I, I just kind of know these quests anyway, so I, I didn't bother uh, turning on. You're asking to STV until level 40. I'm, I'm like, I've this quest has hit me with a sunk cost fallacy now. I'm like three crocolists skin. 
I only need three more. And I'm like, ah, three more? That's not many, you know. It, it, this, is, this is how these quests get you, man. Especially the ones with the awful respawn rates. There's one guy. How many others? Alright, I'll, I'll play ball. We'll run around in circles for a bit. Well, PvP's awful. You're the one killing or getting killed. I feel like quite often people are... Uh, People have that initial rush of like constant world PvP and then they're like, they, they want to kind of get down to business and not bother each other after a bit, which is how PvE servers play, but at some point there's there's always that one guy who plays Undead Rogue, okay? If you play Undead Rogue, I'm looking at you, who is, uh, they, they literally, they, they, they personify Red is Dead. That is all they do. And I mean, you can do that on PvP servers, so again, fair play. And PV too fun as a rogue. You see, we got him. Taco Hitman straight away. The rogue enjoyer. Red is dead. I mean, yeah. That's how those servers work. If you roll on them, that's how, that's something you have to accept. Are the changes live? No, they will be live with the server regional resets. So, uh, Tuesday for NA. Wednesday for EU. What's bad about Undead Rogue? Nothing. All Undead Rogue players are very reasonable people. Very reasonable. Uh, I'm sure they're absolutely, you know, just, just fine in real life as well. It's nice when you're using it. Changes the macro. Yeah, it does. Un unironically, the best things about Rested XP is that it does macros so you can target stuff on every quest. Arthas did nothing wrong either. <laughs> Finally, someone talking sense. So you don't have to do what I'm doing now. You like see something and then you macro it and put a marker on it to try and figure out where it is. That shuriken still needs a buff. I remember pre-release of the phase. It was 25% attack power for 60 energy and then they changed it to 15% attack power for 30 energy, I think. And, uh, oh, actually, Agren did a post on this the other day on Twitter. Um, we basically said not every tank is going to be good on AoE. And if your tank is not good on AoE, then um, that's unfortunate. Uh, let me see if I, actually, let's see if I can find it real quick. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I'm going to run back to town, then we'll take a quick look at this, okay? Yeah, he, ba he basically said, um, yeah, not every tank is going to have good AoE, so if you're playing a rogue and you want Shuriken Storm to be buffed, uh, the chances are not very good, I'm afraid to tell you. Uh, forcing constant five minutes is annoying. You like playing with some people sometimes, but you don't have to do the simple stuff like grinding a rune or PvPing. Yeah, I, I mean, you talk about the STV event, because, yeah, it's, I mean, it's advertised as free-for-all, but uh, it's it's kind of not free-for-all. You, you need to be part of a five-man group in STV uh, if you're genuinely farming blood. That being said, uh, there is kind of like a PvE version of the event where people go to, like, a corner of the map and farm mobs instead of PvPing. It's not as fast as PvPing with a good group, but if you just want to... Get, you know, you just want to get the, you just want to grind the thing or whatever it is that you're getting from the reward. 
or the event out of the way, then you can do that. I think people were grinding... It's like the trolls up here. There's, I think there's an altar here. But if you're like grinding this area here, there's like a... This whole area is like roughly 4.8 billion troll spawns. I've counted them. Uh, so that you can farm quite easily here. And they just go turn in at the altar at the end of the event. And I think you get about two or three hundred blood. And you like two of the events would be enough for an item. So if, you, if you're not a fan of the PvP, you, you can find options to do that. Get blood from mobs as well. Yeah, you get one from the mobs, as far as I'm aware. I haven't done it myself yet, because um, me on the Warlock... Basically, playing a Warlock in the, the STV event is kind of pain. Because if you die once... You get respawned, you don't have a demon, you don't probably don't have a health stone anymore, at least I would hope you didn't. You don't have demon armor. And then you're pacified, so you can't resummon your demon, you can't mount on a fell steed, because fell steeds phase what you call it, fell steeds are mount, uh, a casted spell. So then you have to run out the way, you have to resummon your fell steed, you have to get your demon armor back on, you have to resummon a health stone, you have to do all these things, and it's just Oh, and you also don't get um soul shards join the event either from I mean drain souling players is not viable it does no damage and uh soul burn doesn't rest doesn't restore shards either because the players join the event are don't give honor and if they don't give honor they don't give shards so yeah it kind of uh, the event kind of sucks as a warlock I'm not gonna lie right I've just uh, I've just found I've just discovered some upgrades in my mailbox okay uh, don't worry about this. This is just completely ethical gearing right now. I just I discovered these, okay? Put that on, and we'll put that on. Can I help you? Wait a minute. Are these not great? No, I'll keep them. Farewell. Have I leveled 1 to 40 yet? Uh, no, not in phase 2. Well, when you say 1 to 40, like starting in phase 2, leveling 1 all the way through 40, I haven't done that yet. I have leveled a character to 40, yes. It's crazy to me, Battlegrounds already have it set up to where it gives you your pet back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, what? <laughs> why doesn't the event do this? The hunt, like... Hunters, if your pet dies, do you have to res it and stuff? I, I don't know, maybe you do. I haven't seen any hunters complaining about it. Uh, so maybe your pet just tends to not die on a hunter, or... You'll have BM talent, so you can res it pretty quick. They'll fix it, I hope so. Um, yeah, any real quick about the, um... About the comment Agron made about tanks, because I did mention that, and then I started running out of town before I actually read it. I'll be safe here. Nothing will attack me, surely. Hunter's broken. Hunters have to be broken. It's part of the uh, terms of service. Uh, so, <clears throat> see, how did this conversation start? Uh, so, Shylander asks... Any insight on Rogue Tank underperforming on AoE pulls with aggro? I feel as a Rogue Tank myself that I cannot handle aggro even though I'm perma using big nades to keep it up. Sure, it can really feel super good for pulling mobs, but then I'm naked and can't aggro since it dells no damage. Hmm. Okay, that's that's quite a valid thing. You know, I've, I've heard many rogues saying a similar kind of sentiment towards that. Uh, so Agrend says To manage expectations here We prefer that any version of vanilla Not to be a gather everything up And AoE it down fiesta at all times There are other versions of the game for that There are probably some classes That are too good at AoE threats already 
Shamans, paladins, I'm looking at you, either. And that might be a problem we need to solve. I'd, I'd, I'd rather you didn't decrease AoE threat, to be honest. Uh, but he says, but generally we think that the sweet spot for most classes is to be able to hold two to three mobs pretty reliably. And then it gets iffy past that if your mages or other AoE classes start really blasting without care, uh, particularly at high levels, 50 plus, when stuff can hit a lot harder. Also in general, tanks may need to be comfortable if one or two mobs run off towards DPS in a pull. In original World of Warcraft, this was totally a thing, and there was a degree of responsibility that if you pulled something off a tank that was dealing with a lot of mobs, you would either kill it or CC it and handle it in that way. This might make you uncomfortable as a tank seeing things run off sometimes, but it was an earmark of vanilla World of Warcraft. This isn't a philosophy that's changed in Season of Discovery. So, um, basically it's, uh, Blizzard aren't looking to create a scenario where if you're a tank, you can just run in, god mode, press your AoE buttons and everything's going to stick to you like glue. Oh, five Frost Mages being able to clear your SNR in eight minutes. Uh, the, the god class of vanilla, eh? The original hero class, hmm? Run to the ads tank. Uh. Yeah, um how about how about that mage class, huh? You remember um in classic in 2019, those those Muradon Wall pulls when a mage would pull over 500 elites at the same time and AoE them down. I I, I guess we just pretend we just pretend mage doesn't exist for a moment. The thing is, right, the, the inferring that there's, there's tanks which are exceptionally good on AoE, right, kind of like, it, it, it gives you an idea there should be tanks which are exceptionally good on single target. Is there any tank which is so much better on single target than any other tank is on AoE right now? Does that exist in the game? I mean, Pallies are great on AoE, Shamans are great on AoE. Are they good on single target? Are they, like, significantly better than everyone else? Warrior? Are they, though? Rogue tank? Yeah, I would agree with Rogue. I, I think if there's a single target tank, it's actually Rogue. I, I agree with that. I haven't run past the thing here, have I? Warriors not great. No, I think after the devast after the devastate changes, they're not they're not that good anymore. They're not as good as they used to be. Pally's nasty. You're saying on single target and AoE then. Blade Flurry. I mean, yeah. If you take um, I've gone past it. I'm actually blind. I've gone past it. Most efficient leveling. Yeah, I mean, Warrior Tanks and AoE, you have Furious Thunder to buff the uh, Thunderclap, but Thunderclap is like a meme, right? Bear Druids? I, I don't think Bear Druids a single target is that good. And the AoE is garbage. <laughs> they're, they're like a lose in both regards. It, to me, it really feels like the tanks which are great on AoE, which are shaman paladin are also very very strong on single target didn't bears just get aoe abilities announced though um they got buffs they got uh 10 percent attacks power scaling on swipe swipe will now deal way, way more threat and uh lacerate will hit three targets when berserk is active So, yeah, a number of buffs. I, I like... 
I know, this might be unpopular opinion. I remember when I was doing my review of the Burning Crusade and basically what I said at the end of TBC is I, I'm not a huge fan of threat being the core mechanic Great. that tanks have to care about. What can I do for you? And the reasoning was because threat either goes well and DPS don't have to care about it or threat goes bad and you have to stop DPS and stopping just doesn't feel good. And obviously that's not how things work in vanilla and I accept that and I'm going to have to put up with that. But I think positioning cooldowns, uh, external cooldowns, working with an off tank and so on are just, they're just better metrics for tanking rather than vanilla where it's like how much threat can I generate? That's the only thing that matters. Like threat generation and then if I can live after generating threat that's great. Last rate hitting three targets. Uh, it's only drawing Berserk, which is a three minute cooldown. So if it was last rate hitting three targets baseline, I'd be like, yo, that's crazy. But it's not. It's just drawing Berserk. Uh, so, I mean, in vanilla and to a lesser extent in TBC, like threat is king. All you need to care about on a tank is generating as much threat as humanly possible. They should not nerf threat. It feels like you have to sacrifice by going DPS or mitigation, which does more threat. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess threat modifiers would be the kind of solution. Tanks going DPS just for threat doesn't seem right. Yeah, well, welcome to Fury Prot, the entire meta of vanilla. Of playing a, a warrior that went into defensive stance and pressed bloodthirst with uh, the defiance buff in the prop tree. That was it. I don't know. I mean, again, I did Nomagan yesterday and I thought that the incoming damage felt largely okay. There were some problems on the last boss and we had a Paladin main tank and a rogue off tank. Uh, sometimes the last boss would practically global a paladin. Uh, but on trash and stuff, on AoE pulls, the paladin was great. Then again, if you played TBC, you'll remember what the meta was. It was your main tank was a feral druid, and your off tank was a prop pally. When there was a single target threatening, threatening enemy, you used the feral tank. You sent them against them, if they press mangle once and it crits, they would generate about 4 trillion threats and nobody would ever pull anything off them again. And for all the AoE pulls, the trash, Hydral, um, when there were mob spawns in boss fights, your prop paladin handles that. And you know, that, that was probably one of the better parts of TBC's meta as far as raiding went. In that there was quite a clear divide between this guy is an extremely strong single target tank that can deal with high damage bosses like Mother Shiraz. Um, I was going to say Illidan then, but Shia. Um, <laughs> you know, Mother Shiraz, what other bosses did you, you send your bearing on? Pretty much all of them, right? Brutalis, that was a good example. And then for AoE pulls, the Paladin did that. They had Consecration, they had Avenger Shield on the pull, and... Wait, thinking about it in TBC, that's pretty much all they had. Yeah, there, there wasn't there wasn't too much of a rotation on Paladin in TBC for tanking. Remember gonna be your Paladin? Never lost aggro on bosses using Seal of Martyrdom. Yeah, Oz did once or twice, but um It was like okay for like 90% of the raid. Brother Panks and Sh uh, Shaman has no problems with aggro. Yeah, Shamans are amazing for AoE threats. At the moment, at least. 
And I think Warlock Tank's gonna be. Warlock Tank at the moment is very strong in Nomrigan. And a big reason for that is because the last, I think it's three bosses, have an extreme amount of armor. And Warlocks do not care about armor th uh, threat generation. They just press Searing Pain. And so, so they're actually really good right now. But yeah, um, I think for rogues and stuff, they're pretty much going to leave them as it is. I think it would be nice if they... Tried to make a bit more of a divide between this is a strong single target tank and this is a strong AoE one. Just to define their strengths a bit more. Because at the moment the AoE tanks still feel very competent on single target. Which, you know, they shouldn't be useless at it. Like, I don't want a paladin to like have to tank one thing and they're just like unplayably bad. But at the same time, if you, if you want to have things to have unique strengths then... Tanking is a pretty clear divide where you have single target and you have AoE. Or potentially you have cleave, right? Maybe Feral Druids could be like the ideal cleave tank. But maybe you do make Lacerate baseline hit three targets. Or Swipe is like an insane threat modifier. So it does so much damage that if there's three targets, uh, you, you, like Feral Druids are the go-to guy. And then maybe Paladin and Shaman are the go-to for AoE. And uh, Warrior and Rogues are more for single target. I think Warriors are kind of the odd one out at the moment. I don't really know what they're supposed to be super good at. Because Rogues are good on single target. Ferals, with the buffs, will... I mean, they're going to be a bit better on AoE, but that's about it. Shamans are great at both. swipe will look like after the patch I mean if it did I, I'd be fine with that you know if, if you have a druid tank and you're like okay I'm gonna pull three things and when I have three things on me I'm the best in the game nobody's better than me I think that's fine to have as a niche oh dozer what up balancing has been a concern power creep at 60 has got to be nuts yeah, I've already done crits, which are higher on my Warlock at level 40. In, um, I don't even have Nomagun gear, by the way. Um, and I've done more damage than I had in practically Biss in Nax Ramus. Uh, so yeah, uh, Power Creep is off the charts crazy this season. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see where it ends up, right? Oh, Riot. Uh, yeah, we're looking at um, a bit of the one day logs Reese, um, just earlier on in the stream and Elemental are climbing and I'm so happy to see that I think Elemental is a spec which it should like when I saw the, the very early passes from Elemental I was disappointed with, with where it is at because I thought it should be higher and now it's like definitely in the, in the top third um, and they deserve it Elemental is a cool spec they have a good talent tree they have satisfying abilities and I'm happy to see where they're at And uh, they, they hotfix power surge as well, right? So if you like your casting during a proc, it doesn't consume it. I think they did that, didn't they? Um, what do I need here? One more screecher. I crit some 40, then crits in base snacks. Uh, yeah, unironically though, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what this is one hell of a one hell of a uh, I don't know what you're going to call it a server. Right, a dream weave. Oh, you should be pumping. You'll be doing good. Get those overloads flying out. Um, just make sure you have either a balanced druid or an enhancement shaman too, because they're going to give you that uh, twenty percent nature damage debuff, which is going to be giga important. But then again, we have 10-man raiding at the moment, and 10-man is like, you're lucky to get a comp which is ideal for you. Like, I did Noma last night on my lock, and I didn't have a Fire Mage, so... 
minus 15% fire damage. And it kind of just is what it is, you know. And Shadow Priest, you want Curse of Elements? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I could, I could... Actually, no, um, Elements doesn't do Shadow Damage. Ah, about that. Yeah, that, that, Curse of Shadows for Shadow Damage. Yeah, they're, they're two separate things in vanilla. You got Elements, which is Fire and Frost, and Shadows, which is Arcane and Shadow. And we do not have Curse of Shadows yet. Afraid to say. Yeah, you're, you're pretty much buffing your own damage with um, Shadow Weaving. Don't plug rocket cleaver, so you didn't get to use your totem yet. Oh, the the totem from the um the 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 STV event. Holy, that's like the, I swear that's the best looking weapon they've made on this uh, on this server so far on this seasonal. The totem weapon looks so damn good. Like I wish that was Biss. The rocket cleaver is like some. I mean, it's nice and everything, but it's some like random looking two handed axe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the, I guess the, the problem with Shadow Priest and, and the Shadow Weaving is um, it's on the enemy, not on the Priest. But it's still good for bosses, right? And on Trash, you can just go um, Shared Pain, Mind, Seer, and you should do good damage. Apparently, the Fist Weapon 6% buff doesn't start with elements. I, th I kind of think that's okay, because um, if it did, it would be mandatory forever. Like, literally forever, unless they nerfed it. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, it's like an alternative to the debuff, you know? Right, we'll carry on questing down here. I AP real quick. I shall be RB. What if I am here? What if I've been watching this whole time and I never went AFK? Imagine that. Okay, maybe I did though. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. You'll never know. Ooh. Adjusting. Okay, I'm adjusted. Uh, the class tuning makes me think everyone forgot about Druid Healer's Star Soldier was the only viable option because Life Bloom was so bad. 
and they made Wrath do more damage instead of Sapphire, it would be better. Um, I mean, Druid Healers seem they're kind of okay, but like Wild Growth is just you're like playing Wild Growth the class, right? Cool, red-handed. Yep, gotcha. I was waiting. I was lurking in the shadows, as one does. Okay, what do we need here? We need the raptors and the fragments and... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, the 100% resto drew a pass. <laughs> Did you only plus wild growth? Oh, congrats. Because wild growth, if it gets full value, is pretty damn amazing, I must say. How's Rhett in Season 2? Um... Yeah, uh, it's it's not good. Um, in PvE, in PvP, it's it's quite good, but if you care more about PvE, uh, not so good. Yeah, it's currently one of the lower damage dealing specs, but again, as always, it depends what you care more about. I should have a boon. I swear, after, this isn't the first time I've done this on stream. I'll get a boon, so I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna level later on stream, and I just don't use it. There we go, I used it. Good job, me. Red and blue. Uh, so the blue is for me, the red is for him. That's, that's basically it. Oh, there's two of them. It's not super necessary to have both, but... I don't know, I've never minded having both, really. The extra DPS is nice. I feel like there's some bosses in Nomragan where you're going to struggle to DPS, like, particularly... Holy, just one chime. Um, Electrocutioner does a l Like, Re Restodrub must be so good on Electrocutioner because there is so much damage going out all the time. Uh, Menagerie is like... Menagerie is kind of hard, right? Because there's, there's, like, tanks getting absolutely walloped. And then it's situationally good on the last boss. So many people leveling their BFD buff spoon. Yeah, they're probably thinking, ah, you know, I can save it for this, I can save it for this, and they finish leveling, and then they unboon it, and it disappears. I forgot. Menagerie's easy if your tank and is a beefy. Yeah, we had um, we had a few wipes in the menagerie yesterday. I found out, by the way, um, how the the big tip, if you're doing Menagerie, you know the Whelp and it's Dragon Breath? So, it always targets, in my experience, uh, maybe somebody's had some different experience, but from what I've seen yesterday, the Menagerie Dragon Whelp's Breath always targets the nearest non-tank target. So, I was standing next to the Whelp yesterday to basically bait its breath, and it never went on a raid. It went on me like six times in a row because I was baiting it. And I, I just did it by mistake and I noticed the trend and I was like, oh, this seems to work. And I just kept standing there and it kept working that way. So next time you do Menagerie, I think it's optimal to put a healer next to him and just let your ranged DPS blast instead of having to move. Um, but yeah, if you can just put somebody next to it, Huge if that's it. I'm very confident that is it. Um, it worked super consistently for me yesterday doing that. Uh, give it a go in your next uh, in your next Noma. You know, hopefully it works out for you. Main tank tanks dragon and squirrel. Oh, our tanks took. Um, we had one. T our main tank was on squirrel and. Um, what's the other one? There's Dragon, which has one tank on him because he puts fire everywhere. There's Sheep that does whatever he wants. There's Squirrel, and there's one more. Yeah, we had one tank on the Whelp, then one tank on Squirrel plus the other one. I forget what the other one was. It's like a rat, right? Sheep, chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we had one. We had our main tank on Squirrel, chicken. Sheep is untankable. And then our other tank was on Whelp. 
Yeah, yeah, you just you just run away from sheep. So like our whelp was in the middle of the room. Okay. Prepare for art. So this is the room, right? We had the, the pillars are like here. And we had melee here with the um, squirrel and the um, chicken. This is a this is a squirrel. And then we had the whelp here. That's a whelp, okay. And then we had the tank here for the whelp, and I was here, and the tanks of melee were here, and the healers were here. Basically, every time the whelp would breathe, it'd go on me here, and then these lot could just do whatever. And the sheep was like kind of in the middle, just going towards people, and then they'd run down here, and then they'd get too high in aggro, and they'd run back up here again. And the whelp just stood in the middle and like ranged hit it whenever they could. That's what we did. Chicken Squirrel deals a lot of damage. Yeah, we, we had one tank on both of them. I, I don't know if you're not meant to do that, but we, we were doing that. We just had melee cleave them, and melee hit the egg as well. And range just, like, spread their damage between sheep and uh, whelp. Just going to drape for the main tank. Isn't that going to be a pain in the ass for the, the, the melee, though? Or with a melee just not hitting them and you're having range doing them. I guess there's a few different ways to do it, but that worked for us. Got the first two wipes as well. Hmm. You don't have to kill the egg, you can walk away from it. Oh really? We were always killing it. We had our melee cleaving it though. We had um, we had two warriors, so it's like incredibly easy to cleave because it had like one k health. They could literally just send in a cleave and whirlwind, and it dies. But yeah, I think the biggest takeaway from Menagerie was uh, baiting the whelp's breath. The Closest non-tank target. Give it a try. Next menagerie. See how it goes for you. Worked for us. I watched a video where a mage teleported to an in-development area in Season of Discovery and there was a Karazhan Tower. Holy! There's some griffins up there. Looks like there's going to be a flight path. There is like a hidden entrance to Karazhan. Um, it's it's kind of halfway up the tower and it was never used, I don't think. It's kind of hard to explain where it is, but... Yeah, there, there is like an alternative way to get into Karazhan that was just not used. Not the walkway, um, the, the one we get in sort of round the back and then you go up. There's, a, there's another entrance, which I just don't think was used. Uh, so it could be that one. Right, I need more Razor Moors. And after, yeah, after they did Menagerie, obviously last boss was like... Ooh, I just got a Twisted Chanter Staff. <laughs> Yo, that would have been nice in Phase 1. <laughs> what? Yeah, not bad, not bad. I'll take that. Very cool, thank you, Blizzard. Yeah, and the last boss, we... It actually had a few problems, like, well, on our first few pulls on it. Because the tank kept getting, uh, globaled on the frost phase. With the super cooled smash plus melee, dealing like 1.6k health, and they just weren't topped. And then what we did, uh, was we all used world buffs, and we went from struggling in phase 2 to instantly killing the boss. Yeah. <laughs> if there weren't world buffs, it probably would have been quite challenging to do. Uh, but yeah, well, well, world buffs are one hell of a drug, what can I say? They do be getting the numbers done. And we'd specifically saved all our world buffs too, but... Next, uh, next run I wanna, I wanna like, pop them for all the bosses and, you know, make the most of them.
see how much <laughs> I want to see how many, uh, how many like crazy chaos bolt crits I can get. Well, buff some bis gear equals easy peasy. Even uh, the BFD gear. I was saying this yesterday in the raid, but um, it really feels like the BFD gear, like the BFD gear for when we were level 25 is so much more powerful than the Gnome Gunner gear is for being level 40. Like the BFD gear, when you look back at it, is absolutely busted as hell. Gnome Gun's got some great gear too, especially the profession items, but the BFD gear in general is so well itemized. I think they've actually tried to step back from like consciously itemizing stuff that well. Because you just delete stuff. It's ridiculous. Okay, that's that. Let's go hand this in and get the uh, Raptors End quest, I think. Yep. They disabled them in dungeons and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they did in Season of Mastery, but I, I, they're, not, they're just not going to do it in Season of Discovery. They've actively decided to bring more world buffs into the game, and now we have the Chronoboon and stuff. And you might struggle if you lose world buffs early on during a new phase, but I think after that, uh, you'll probably be okay. And the update of the Trone Amulet and White Mane's uh, White Mane's Chapeau. They did indeed. They updated plenty of items from Scarlet Monastery. Um, Mograine's Might too. Now has spell damage on it. So if you're a Rep Pally enjoyer or a Shaman, you know, get get your hold, get your hands on that. White Mane's Chapeau has a uh, 11 spell power, very powerful. Trone Amulet, 15 healing, but they they updated plenty of stuff, you know. This is a rare spawn. There's two new what? There's a new wand with seven spell damage. This would have been pretty much previous at level sixty, by the way. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, this talisman has spell power on. Uh, library Arcanist Doan has a bunch of new stuff. Illusory Rod has gone from you know a bunch of stats to twelve spell damage. Same with professions, though. Just tons of new stuff uh, for casters. I was uh, haven't tried Noma so far. How would you say it is? Pretty easy. Probably asked like a hundred times. Uh, no, it's, it's fine. Um, Nomragon is, without a doubt in my mind, more difficult than uh, BFD was. It is actually quite a step up, and I think over the next week or two, you're going to see a lot of pugs struggling in Nomragon. The first three bosses are kind of free. They're not mechanically demanding. Uh, but Electrocutioner, the Mechanical Menagerie, and Mechaneer are all quite mechanical bosses for vanilla. More so than stuff you'd see typically at level 60. And I, I don't think any any of those three bosses are like completely three. Uh, like if you mess up on Electrocutioner, you do the stacking wrong, you just die. Like you can't outgear it, you die if you do the mechanic wrong. On Menagerie, you have to control the fight super well. <clears throat> and on Mech I think Mechanier is the most outgearable fight. Because you can just get through the get through the uh, difficult parts of the fights by just blasting DPS. But Menagerie, you can just I think you can just mess up and lose control of the fight. So I'd say BFD was about on the difficulty scale like a, a, a two other three. Maybe pre nerf Calrus was like a 5 or a 6. And the bosses towards the end of Noma, they're not like retail difficulty, like by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, they're big of 6 to a 7 thereabouts. Are the fights along? I think our first kill on Electrocutioner was... I mean, the, the bosses have like over 200,000 health, you know. Uh, the final boss has... I want to say like 400k health. Uh, he's uh, he's a pretty chunky boy. <laughs> uh, these these fights will last you like at least on your first kill. The early ones you can get down in like one to two minutes. The later ones will be somewhere from 
Uh, anywhere from two to like five or six minutes. Mechanical bosses, good joke. Wait. Don't want them to nerf the armor values. Yeah, I'd um, I'd I'd give it a bit more time. You know, like it feels bad when you're playing warrior or something at the moment, but typically they these classes scale very well. The mage there, she got hit with a two two point two k arcane surge. Um, yeah, no, I haven't seen anything about mage nerfs. Uh, just uh, just resist it. You know, if you roll a gnome, you have ten arcane resistance. Uh, yeah, what more do you want? One of my favourite class changes in Season of Discovery. I do like the quality of life books that have been introduced this phase. Some of them are more than quality of life though, particularly... Why is this hyperspawn? Holy crap, I just got to run past him. Uh, particularly hunters getting Aspect of the Viper, which only reduces damage by 10%, by the way. Whereas in Wrath, it reduced damage, is reduced damage by 50%, so this is like a crazy version of Aspect of the Viper. Uh, Warlock's getting Summoning Portal. Uh, Mage is getting 20 food a stack. I think these are all just kind of like nice things to have, you know, without like breaking the game and making it feel not like classic anymore. I think they're an answer to a lot of community demands as well. So, uh, yeah, good good job on that one, Blizz. Also, give Warlock so well. Is that, I mean, if you're giving Mage 20 water per cast, you can give Warlock so well, right? Rage generation reduction from increased armor is super bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this is what I was saying last phase, that reducing, increasing boss's armor to reduce the damage of physical damage dealers isn't really it. Because A, it makes Warrior feel bad to play, but B, it, like, it also adversely affects every single other physical damage dealer. Bring the mage table. I mean, you've, you've got 20 water per cast now. I think you're okay. Like, it's 10 man raiding. You have to do nine casts. It's, it's, obviously it's like a bit inconvenient, but it's okay. Whereas so well, like, I was handing out health stones on Menagerie and Mech um, Mechaneer last night. And it's a, put it like this. It's a good, it's a good job. I actually consciously farmed soul shards pre-raid. So if I didn't, I was out. Uh, but I could hand people, you know, some little health cookie that can restore 500 health or something, which, which is pretty good, to be honest. Um, that can definitely save you. Uh, do I need to take this 30 pound? I don't need to take that. No, I don't need that. Let's get that. And thank you very much. We are done here. Let's go and do the Dragon Maw quest. Gnome was Biss race all along. Yeah, just I rolled Gnome for the arcane resistance, to be honest. It's this it's aesthetic. True. You know what? You know something I thought of ages ago, right? Um so mages have a lot of like utility stuff, don't they? They can conjure their own food, they can conjure their own water. Um they have arcane intellect, which is, you know, it's a good group wide buff. They can do portals, they can do teleports. Do mages really need table as well? I had this idea, right? Druids, okay, hear me out. What you can do, you can go to a reagent vendor, new item on reagent vendor, like, um, I don't know, uh, seed of conjure breakfast, okay? And literally, you buy this seed off the, uh, off the reagent vendors, and you yeet it into the ground, okay? And it grows a little tree, and then people in your party can pick food off the tree, and it's it um, it serves as like food and water. Thoughts? So basically, you have instead of conjure table, you have like food tree that druids spawn. <laughs> you, just, you get your seed, and you just wah, slam it into the ground. That'd be neat. I think it. I think it'd be um, it'd be cool, right? I think it's in theme, Madrid as well. You know, 
the nature attuned class you know planting food for his allies that sound that sounds very druidic to me there you go see there's one of these druids right now they're everywhere whoa is that apropos for the class I think it would be but uh obviously we're not we're not about to get anything new like that nerf damage but give them food yet yeah, then they can't complain can they holy I just deleted that guy oh you see that's a good trade I give you a five minute blessing of wisdom I get thorns and mark of the wild this is possibly the best trade deal ever What if tree form serves that purpose? Imagine you literally turn into a tree, you plant your roots and the just fruit starts appearing on you. Find our freedom. God, you're a stupid blessing. By the way, with paladins, right? Everyone's got these quality of life bugs, you know. Mages have 45 minute arcane intellect. Priests have 45 minute um, blessing of... Uh, uh, powered fortitude and then paladins they're like we've increased the, the duration of your blessings by 100% and I'm like it's yeah it's still only 10 minutes though like can you make it like 15 <laughs> why does it have to be this bad I always didn't get shit you got commanding shout that's uh, commanding shout's not bad you got no, only a burden actually true yeah, like 15, I, I've been like, okay, you know, it's fair enough, but 10? Ugh. It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it, but, you know, it's just, it's a small buff. Redirect for a minute's terrible. It's just copy-paste from Cataclysm. Uh, that's it, exactly how it looks in Cataclysm. And they've just taken it from there and been like, whoop, into vanilla. There we go. Wait, you can't do commanding and battle shout at the same time, though, can you? It's one or the other, right? I would assume it's one or the other. A paladin, you notice? You can do both? Huh? Well, that, that's not how commanding shout works. Uh, what? Why can you do both? It's always been one or the other. You can have one shout active. Huh? That's weird. Bags on cooldown. He's 20 rage every two minutes. Yeah, I, I just assumed it would be one or the other. Huh. Well, that is, uh, that's unfortunate. What else can I say? Uh, that's what you thought we could do. Yeah, I mean, if I play the warrior, I wouldn't even try and do both of them, to be honest. I'd just be like, oh, commanding shout. Yeah, I could, so I can do health or I can do attack power. I can't do both, can I? Huh. Damn, I, 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 I'm... Before that, I was kind of like... If warrior's two-minute battle shout is like... It's okay, it's kind of annoying, but it's like okay, because you usually can find a global. Um, particularly when you're leaving combat and you have a bit of rage left, right? But now it's like, if you can do both, you could you could increase the durations a little bit and it would be fine. Like at least five minutes. We, we've just gone over the Paladin five minute discussion and we think ten minutes isn't enough. healers into thinking the group's taking more damage. I keep pressing this. You can do this thing on Warlock, right? If you summon your Imp and you... Uh... By the way, this is like the most useless piece of advice ever and you shouldn't do this, but if you summon an Imp and you, you have Blood Pact and you make a macro to turn Blood Pact on and off, every time you turn it on and off, everyone in your party will lose the amount of stamina it gives. It can't kill anyone, but it will like 
you can like spam the button and it will just reduce their health. Um, yeah, do, do with that what you will. It worked like the way it worked that way in vanilla at least. I don't know if it still works. Maybe they uh, hot fixed it because it's it's a stupid interaction. Oh, there's some damage there. Judge Rosilla Crusader. Probably should. I feel like I'm doing okay damage. It's not like I'm using a judgment for command, though, is it? I remember at the start of a battleground once in War Sun Gulch, I was just uh, I was actually spamming the macro with blood pack to reduce everyone's health, and everyone just started the battleground on like 50 percent health. It was, it was like the most stupid grief ever, and I was like, yeah, I'm just not going to do this again. It is very in theme for Warlocks, though. That locks can kidnap other locks. They did hotfix it. They did hotfix it. It's uh, The duration's been reduced to 10 seconds now on Enslave. Or Subjugate, sorry. We, uh, whew, we don't do Enslaving Demons anymore. We only Subjugate. Boo, yep. Yep, yep, yep. No, you're not allowed to do that. Very naughty. At least the hot fixing thing is pretty quick though, right? Why is my sleeping bag still on a 30 minute cooldown, but my rested XP is about to run out? I thought they were both three hours. Huh? Group it. Oh, ding 27. We were climbing in the group with two yoks yesterday. They're different ranks of blood pack. Do you think it was slowly killing us? Yeah, I think those like bonus health modifiers, um, they increase max health, but when they drop off, they don't reset your health, so it's just like minus health. And as you like go in and out of range of different ranks of blood pack, it probably would just reduce your maximum health. Uh, so yeah, again, v very in theme for Warlocks. I need to go to the mailbox. I may have one or two items waiting for me so I can... Uh, much as I love the festive spirit, we're now midway through February. So maybe it's time to retire the Santa hat for a few months, eh? They left it in. Yeah, you can still um, subjugate Metalox just for 10 seconds now. Down from potentially up to five minutes. <laughs> Used to be literally, you saw a Metalox, you pressed and uh, subjugate Demon. If he wasn't paying attention, he was, he was now your friend for five minutes, whether or not he wanted to be. Petition, petition to keep Santa hat until 60. Oh no. I'm going to be wearing the Santa hat till actual next year. To be fair, Great Father Winter is a dwarf, so maybe I should uh, role play, you know? Go around, give people presents, put people on the naughty list. How tall are you? I am at least. Four for eight, which is a uh, good height in my opinion. Will the Forsaken broke you out of it? Oh, undead win again with that OP racial man. Disgusting. Disgusting. Imagine. Imagine new quality of life rune. Your blessings. Um, no longer overlap. Shorter cooldown blessings. You can free them without losing wisdom. Mm. Probably too far, right? Change freedom instead of blessing of freedom to hand of freedom like it is in Wrath.
I did kind of like that change in ref though, but uh, maybe that's too much of a depart from classic though. The stream is the gift and it's all year round. Though I am seeing who's being on the naughty list. And there will be coal. Large amounts of coal straight down your chimney. If you don't have a chimney, I'll make one. Okay. I know if you've been naughty and I know if you've been nice. Somehow. Blessings linger for three seconds. Ooh, that's interesting. Actually, they, they, yeah, someone's saying they, they, they didn't increase the duration on Shaman Imbuements, did they? They're still five minutes, right? These mobs are so annoying, man. I keep rebuffing the wrong thing. A blacksmith, you like coal? No, I'm giving you a present. That's not what I intended. Yeah, if you don't have a chimney, it's, I'm just going to yeet it straight into uh, your... Into the AC. People live in the apartment over you like that? They're going to have to like it, I'm afraid. You only get one of those oil drills and drill through your roof. They didn't? Oh, man, imagine. Yeah, that's such a missed opportunity for shamans. Okay, this guy will have the last war banner. Yeah, there we go, thank you. Just have to ask. One more hit. There we go. Right, so what are we doing now? Uh, we'll go over here. Seeing the layering issues in STV, your group earlier were phasing in and out to different layers. Uh, yeah, I have heard about that, actually. Apparently, right, apparently, allegedly, or so they say, word of mouth is that if you arrive to the STV event early on, like 15 minutes before it starts, you don't have layering issues. But if you arrive like a bit later, the layering just like completely messes your group up. Uh, but yeah, it is bad at the moment. I'm, it's, it's like both the PvP events so far have both kind of been fiestas, which like they come out, players immediately expose the problems with them. And then Blizzard are like scrambling to try and amend them and patch them and fix them and all that. It's happened twice in a row now. Well, PvP is just really hard to get right. Like really hard, especially in MMOs, because it's just, it's, it's not fair and it's not balanced. And the open world nature where people can organize before a match starts is just... It compounds that, it really does. Yeah, apparently, allegedly. <laughs> no, you didn't hear it from me, but apparently. You don't have to do too many of them? No, you don't, no. If you're purely after the rewards, um, you might not like the event per se, but you're not going to have to do it for long. You can kind of get everything you want and then say all right goodbye stv pvp but it, it does suck for the pvp enjoyers right you just want to go there and you know go in there for a little go in there five man pre-made and just basically blast people for 30 minutes every three hours no mages aoe farming here there used to always be a mage here every single time Got an event to farm the AB rep. Yeah, I was kind of surprised about that. Um, so for AB rep, AB rep, they put the lumber in the STV event. The lumber hand in was, it's like one blood coin, a uh, silver coin. Ooh. All right, he's got away. And I think each hand in gives you 200 rep. I went to check it earlier on, but they removed the lumber. I think this was the other day. 
Does anyone know if it's 200 rep per hand in for the Yolomba? So if it's 200 rep per hand in, that's like... That's not very good. I think neutral to exalted is 36k rep. Uh, so that's... um. That's going to be, uh, you know, one or two of the blood coins. I thought they'd make the AB rep super easy to get, similar to how the Warsung rep was. But it just seems so much more difficult to do. A quest for AB? Uh, yeah, so the, there is a quest for AB. If you... You know the STB event? If you get one of the silver coins, the blood coins, you can hand it in at the reward vendor at the Gurubashi Arena and buy a basically a bunch of um, Arathi Lumber or whatever it's called and then you hand that in at Arathi Basin depending on your faction and I think it's 200 rep um, this thing here yeah so the, the guy at Gorbashi and uh, he sells one of these you got that and it's the objective of Stranglethorn Lumber, and you hand that in at, you know, here or Hammerfall, and apparently it gives 200 rep, according to this. And that's, that, that is the AB farming method this phase. Which is, um, pretty crap, to be honest. Like, you can go do the weekly Warsong thing and get a thousand rep. Probably more like a thousand five hundred if you complete the event. But this is just kind of bad. I think once the twice opted out since, yeah. I, I mean, I hope they fix it right. It's, um, unfortunately, it's been quite typical for PvP events so far to be a bit of a fiesta. It's never there. I was told it was removed. They did remove it because apparently it was bugged. It wasn't giving XP or something. Or uh, rep, one or the other. Um, yeah, I went to look the other day and it wasn't there either, so... It's probably just going to be mysteriously restored. And hopefully when they mysteriously restore it, they get, make it a bit more rep as well. Because 200 rep for one silver coin is like... It's not good. It's, no, it's not good at all. Fun if your group comp's good and you have comms. Yeah, I haven't been... I haven't actually managed to do that yet. Um, pretty much I saw the event... And I was leveling a little bit slower, and if you get even, like, remotely behind the curve, it just feels so difficult to do STV, even now. But yeah, I do need to farm the uh, trinket on my lock. The trinket looks really good. I don't think I'm going to use the rings, because you can only use one of the items, right? People have them out already. Yeah, they do. What do you know all these things? Uh, you, could, you could say I spend a little bit of time playing well. I, I played this game a little bit. You know, make videos about it, and then I level loads of alts and stuff, and... I mean, if I'm gonna make content about WoW, hopefully I can, uh... have a reasonably good idea what I'm talking about. Should, should end up with better videos for you guys, you know? Right, Nulls. STB's rough if you aren't full of some Noma gear. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to do a video soon. I've just been kind of a... It's been a bit of a shift with from how I usually do videos because there's a lot of updates coming up super fast and usually I I kind of know everything in advance because I've played all these patches before, but with Season of Discovery, I have not played this patch before, so uh, sometimes things change and I have to uh, sort of amend how I'm doing a video. Anyway... Uh, but... Yeah, I pretty much recommend at this point in time, if you're heading into STV and you're not level 40, uh, you should either have a guild group, friends or something you want to have fun during the event with, or you should probably just opt out or just go <laughs> log off for 30 minutes and do something else because it is like this event is brutal. It really is. Um... And it's well PvP at its finest, right? It's it's like free for all, but actually you can have five man groups. And if you're not in a five man group, you're very liable just to be cannon fodder for the 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 you know the next five man group running by you.
PvP chaos it is. I kind of wish I was playing a better solo class, or like there was more incentive to play solo. Um, I, I don't know, maybe if you, you got more blood when you're solo, but if you get more blood when you're solo, people are just going to win trade and... There's just always like some degen thing people can do. But playing solo and trying like 1v1 people is fun, whereas if you're in a 5 man, you kind of farm everyone till you come up against another decent 5 man. And then it ends up being a lot of kiting back and forth and then you have to like it's more about making sure you don't get you don't get sandwiched between two different five man groups so if that happens you just you get overwhelmed and you die the third party two other groups yeah yeah, it's a lot about positioning, right? And just, like, having your back to a mountain or some kind of, like, natural thing where people can't flank you. And, yeah, the moment you have two groups that are coming up against you, it is uh, it is over. You're going to the graveyard. That's Your game sounds when I'm side-screening and messes me up. Clang, clang, what am I being attacked? Whoa. Yeah, if you're tagged out, those uh, those knolls are coming for you. Can't fathom why they made a forced PvP event even for PvE servers. So uh, the, you can basically PvE the event. Um, I think this has gone a bit under the radar, but even if you kill normal mobs during the event, um, as far as I know, they still give one blood. So if you go to someone which is a bit... It's like highly populated by N NPCs, but away from altars... You can form a five-man party and just farm mobs. And it's unlikely you're going to get PvE peers coming for you because you're, like, so out of the way that it's not really worth them running over. You'll still be flanked, of course. You're still in a PvP um, free-for-all kind of thing, but... Yeah, that is that is an alternative if you, you know, you just don't want to do the PvP thing. seen a few of those types of groups forming on wild growth and when they were forming they were looking for level 40s and i wasn't level 40 so i was like ah rip but um yeah i need i need to get both versions to go a bit more you can farm pb People do that. I'm, I mean, I'm on a PvE server, so people are more predisposed to want to PvE, uh, which I understand because I am on this server too. Uh, I think there's an altar here, but if you go kind of here, you know, I sit in the ruins of, Z I think it's Zilkondra or something. There's like, uh, there's so many PvE respawns here, and you can pretty comfortably farm the like level 42 to 44 trolls here, or there's a bunch of like level 38s here ish. And uh, you just go to that zone and farm them out. And I hear to get you get 200 to 300 blood per event, uh, depending on your group comp and efficiency and whether people decide to contest you. Uh, which means if you're, you're you're getting one item per two events, which is it's pretty fast, right? Even if you don't like PvP, you can just that's your that's your option. That's the alternative. Um, which, uh, again, if, if, if you prefer the PvE thing because you're all on a PvE server, then that is something you should consider doing, for sure. Right, we'll hand this in here. I need to get the bag as well. I remember one time questing out this bag on my first kill. It's super RNG, though. And that's in. Fire Taboo. Yeah, I guess I'll do this one. I'll do Fire Taboo, I'll do the bank quest, and then we can hearth over here. Get my hearths there. Have to step away. Shadow step away. Ooh. What's the alternative? I mean, if you, if you didn't hear, basically you can PvE the uh, PvP event. You just form a five-man group and go and farm mobs somewhere on the map.
which depending on how you enjoy playing the game may be for you. What do you have here? There's classic quest you get on the first mob or the a thousandth mob. I tell you what, though they um, I think I think so. I think I, mm, I'm gonna put this in hardcore and stuff, and like for the starter level zones, I feel as though they amended a lot of the respawn rates for mobs and stuff. But for us, as we are now in the twenty-five to forty bracket. There are some questing zones which just have absolutely awful respawns and they they really need to take a look at them and amend them a bit. Because I know we're still early on into the phase and stuff, but some of the zones for questing are just genuinely terrible. Like Alliance, Curse of Medicine Men or Fighters up here. Uh, if you know how bad that one is, um, where else have we got? Uh, Swamp of Sorrows. There's the bit up here with the elementals. These are good for farming gold though, so maybe you don't want to increase those. Badland. I was doing this quest yesterday. This quest is infamously terrible to do. No claims business and desolus is stupid for do Oh, I was doing that on yesterday, Sasnak! This do you know the one with lesser rock elementals here? It's like yeah, I think it's just about here. This quest has been awful literally forever. I was doing it yesterday, and I'd, I'd do some of the, I'd, I'd pull a few mobs here, and I'd run down here and do the vultures, and I'd run back up, and I'd run down here and do the vultures, and then I ran back up. I ran down here, got all the scrap metal, ran back up, and I ran down here and did the vultures, ran back up, then I ran down here and got all the crag, the, the, the tooths off the, the hyenas or whatever they are, then I ran back up, and finally I finished the quest, after like rotating that many times. Yeah, the Reclaimer's Business and Desolus, there are... It's so contested you looked at it. Yeah, the first time I went there was in the evening and there was like six people there. I just, I, I left. Like, I didn't even bother. I was like, I know there's no point. When I was doing it, there was two other people there. And one of these guys was unironically there for about 45 minutes straight. Like, it's painful. But this, yeah, what Sazen was saying with the reclaimers business. I think this is an alliance only quest. Um, This quest, if you have the patience of a saint... You should do this. If you do not, avoid like the plague. The elementals you just talked about. Oh yeah, I remember the, the uh, maelstrom weapon quest, right? This quest. This damn quest, man. So you get this quest, okay, it's a follow-up. So you do, you do the you do the demons, that's easy. Uh, you do this quest, that's pretty easy. And then you get this quest, which is Felhelm Brain. They're easy to get. Netherwing Maiden Wings, they're easy to get. Doom Water Blood. The Doom Water Blood... Um, it says in the quest text, right? They drop from Doom Water Captain or Lord. Do you know what? Doom Order Lord does not exist. They did not put them in the game. So it's literally... Just do more to captain, and they only spawn here. And there's about four or five of them on a five minute cooldown each. This quest is like unbelievably bad. I, I, I would not do it again. Uh, do, do not recommend. Uh, yeah, I hadn't done that quest before, and I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm clearing the map for XP and gold and. Not worth. Not worth. Do not do this. <laughs> Found the, the solid stone. Oh, for the um, for the uh, what do you call it? Reagent run. That quest's all right because you you have the enraged rock elementals for that um, the the solution to Doom quest, and then you have uh, the regular rock elementals and the enraged ones. There's like a few options for that, but those lesser rock elementals are terrible. The kobolds and the Rathi. The, I actually didn't mind that quest. Um, so yeah, it's like up here-ish. There are a lot... There, there's a, okay, tip for the kobolds and the Rathi. There's a lot more kobolds outside the cave than inside the cave, okay? If you can't find anything, go outside the cave.
honestly. Yeah, some of the quest respawns are just not good. And uh, there's even like a few of the first quests in STV for the young Stranglethorn Tigers and the young Panthers. They're really bad. Um, Stranglethorn Raptors are also pretty bad. about quest runbacks was in Kata when they started in questing forward along with the journey quest conversions um, yeah so in Kata they kind of converted stuff to being more story based and having less farming but oh, there's the back in vanilla it's very much uh, you will go out there and you will farm and you will enjoy yourself doing so Up to drop rate. I mean, I think the drop rate's okay because um, part of classic questing is it's like as meme worthy as some of these drop rates are, you're supposed to grind XP from mobs. This is like this is part of the game design. Uh, but if they just increase the number of mobs, uh, again, they did this for hardcore. Uh, they made there be so many more mobs available, especially in early level zones. But um, in Hardcore, this was never a problem because, <laughs> you know, most people didn't make it to level 25. Shock horror. Uh, by the way, this quest I'm doing at the moment has a terrible drop rate and I just got two in a row. I'm now not going to get one for 10 in a row. Um, but yeah, this, this wasn't a problem in Hardcore. And it is becoming or is noticeably more of an issue now just because of how the loot distribution works. You know, I'm, I'm going to try this. I've got all my cooldowns. I'll be fine, right? No, he oh, he does have Healing Wave. He's casting Healing Wave. Why must you heal wave? Right, we'll send an early health pot. Okay, plenty of health left when I bubbled that. Get some heals off. Read on that. I'm trying not to like turn my back to these guys. And he crits me 184. Why do you have to crit me? I literally had that. I was going to lay on hands the next global. No, my world buffs. <laughs> Damn it. I literally had it. I was going to lay on hands, not turn my back so I could dodge and parry and stuff, and then guy decides I'm going to crit you for 164. Never lucky. It was it was doable. I, I had it, apart from the, you know, the whole dying thing. I don't think chasing was the right call. He's a caster though, and he can he can lightning bolt and do a healing wave. I had to finish him when he ran. You're not going to survive that. I was I, it was 23 overkill, and I was going to lay on hands next global, so I was very close to uh, doing that. I just I didn't account for bad RNG. RNG got me. That's how life goes. You farm the ogres for the prayer beads for your sheaf of light and art of war. And two, for two hours and 45 minutes. I actually read about that. I got one of the prayer beads on one of my alts. Um, not there. Rogue? I feel like I got a prayer bead and I put it in the bank somewhere. Delete some of this stuff too. That. Oh, I thought there was a wild vine for a second. I got excited. Uh, buff that. Yo, John, what up? How you doing? Thanks for dropping by. We only have three of them, right? I can handle three, surely. I nearly handled five. Fortune favors the bold. Let's go. I have health pop. Surely this is enough. Okay. Pop this for the armor. This 
alpha guy am. He actually is an alpha. Oh, it's the brutes that hit me so hard. Actually, I don't think I can do this. Oh, you're going to run in fear or? Okay, he cannot crit how much health I have right now. Okay, good. Alpha's uh I thought the alpha was the dual wielding one, but brutes are always the dual wielders, aren't they? Oh, the um, brutes are the ones with 200 weapons. Right, we got there. When the Paladin class updates. Uh, yes, so they made it so when Art of War procs, it reduces the mana cost of your next exorcism or holy shock by 80%. And they reduce the mana cost of Beacon of Light. That's it. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind? There we go. Problem with these packs around here, there's just uh, there's so many of them together. CBA with Beacon? Yeah. It should be a bit better, though. I don't know what they reduced it to. They, they didn't actually give us numbers. They just said they greatly reduced it. Um, and I don't have Beacon. Oh, wait, I do have Beacon. You know what? Let's uh, let's see what they reduced it to. I didn't think I had it. So for me at level 27, it costs 43 mana. Um, I don't know how good that is comparative to what it used to be, but that seems pretty cheap to me. It's just a flat reduction, not a prop based thing. Um, oh, I don't know. Well, if, if someone has tried it, then you can let me know. But that is how I read it. I really want to try this camp, but I know it, I know it's a terrible. All right, we'll pull with exorcism. We'll see how many we get. OK, we get three. Three is doable. Okay, so we have three is very doable here. I'm going to save Hodge in case he decides to heal. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he just got parry hasted to death right there. It was like, it was 200 at 25? Holy crap, that's, that's actually terrible. All right, so yeah, they like quartered its mana cost. All right, easy. Nice big heal off that too. If I had Sheaf of Light, that would have absolutely topped me off. But uh, I'm, I'm obviously still rocking my Santa hand, Varigan's Fist. I'm, I'm literally playing the uh, the Phase 1 Paladin guy right now. Oh, Ramadan Steve, and you. I hope you're having a great day. I am. Thank you. Two more. Decent drop rate. Usually, This is one of these quests which is usually pretty bad as far as drop rate goes. You know, learned about Harry Haston Sod been playing since 05. I mean, to be fair, it's not an intuitive thing to know. Like, I, I, I feel unless you heard about it, from somebody else, you you probably not realise it's in the game. I'm pretty sure I didn't know about Perry Haste until I was, you know, researching videos and stuff for vanilla. Armor on bosses is fine. I mean, you remember pre-release of phase two, Blizzard said there were gonna be resistances on bosses. It's just we didn't know it was going to be resistance to physical damage <laughs> instead of like some kind of element or caster thing. Uh, yeah, surprise melee, by the way. Yeah, they're not, they're, the bosses don't have uh, spell resistances. They have resistance to your weapons. A big resistance. The Twitch height for Sod is alive. Um, I, I don't know, really. I'm not... Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little streamer. I just do my little streams twice a week, do a bit of leveling, talk about the game. Um, 
Maybe. I mean, I, I guess it's pretty early in phase two, right? So people are probably interested, but I'm not sure. Homunculus, Sunder, Fairy Fire, Expose. The acid thingy from Deadly Strike of the Hydra. Ooh, look at this damage. Taking no damage here. What the? Alright, I've got a crocodile friend too. Alright, more the merrier. Well, these Fen Runners are literally Usain Bolt, the WoW version. They absolutely take off when you hit them. Nope. Oh. Alright, peace out. See us. Alright, see you in TBC. Alright, he's gone. I don't know where he's gone. Warrior damage is not so 40. I mean, we were playing with two warriors yesterday and they were both doing pretty good, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, they're both doing decent. I think it's fine. I think Blizzard are kind of correct to be cautious about giving warriors too much. Yeah, I agree. Let, let Warriors get some gear. Look, at the start of Phase 1, Warriors were kind of midway through DPS. The new enchant. Oh yeah, the, dis the Dismantle enchant. I I mean, I have the Epic Staff from Phase 1 on my Warlock. I should probably get Dismantle on it, because I'm, I'm not going to upgrade it for a while, even still. There are upgrades in uh, Gnome, obviously, but... Yeah, it's, it's, pr it's pretty garbage. It's just like 0.5% of your damage. I think when they buff it, it should... If it was a good enchant, it would do somewhere in the region of 5% of your damage, thereabouts. Not more than that. Oh, it doesn't proc off runes. Is that what it is? Yeah, because if, if I was playing my Warlock, it, it practically just wouldn't proc then. Used to, used to be massive, did it? I, I have no idea. Oh, I see. I see. Well, hopefully they get it fixed then, because it would be good. Um, enchanting, sword, and dismantle. Permanently enchants a weapon to cause all spells and attacks to sometimes deal 60 to 90 additional damage with spells to mechanical creatures. This is like the... <laughs> like, bro, who wrote this? Permanently enchant a weapon to cause all spells and attacks to sometimes deal bonus damage with spells to mechanical creatures so it, it deals it causes spells and attacks to deal additional damage with spells eh? <laughs> uh, just, you want to get a get a little spell check or something I don't, I don't it's just so poorly written i don't know what that is can it crit do you know i haven't chanted it yet but can it crit and I guess it's only against mechanicals. Is it applied to debuff? Yeah. I, d I don't know about the old version at all, actually. Um, I'm going to not do these. I'm going to like hand in one or two up here. But it's sort of like Nightfall. Ooh. Give them a break. Apparently, yeah, they, they do need a break on this on this text. It's like it does damage with spells and abilities. With spells. <laughs> okay, so which one is it? both <laughs> yeah it does, it does damage with both and spells within how many days was i 40 on my warlock um i got to 40 um Two days ago now, so that would have been 
Um, six days. Very casual player, by the way. Six days to 40. I did not Scarlet Monastery grind or anything like that. I did some pre-quests. I handed my pre-quests in. I went and farmed some stockades. And then I went back to questing at level 30. doing all this now this quest is annoying as hell at this level oh i have talent points um okay question for rep pallies is sanctatiora still like a bait talent or do you go improve retora um, i'm going conviction for now anyway but like hypothetically do i take sanctatiora when i can now because i remember in classic it was actually a bait talent and improved retor aura was always better What am I missing? All of wait, do I not have the quest? Eh? Hold. Incurs, war banners, the Dark Iron War. Wait, am I just not high enough level? I must not have the high enough level. For ten percent strength and consecrate. Oh, I see. Wait, all of done requires level 25. I must have already done this quest then. Oh, right, yeah, I guess I've already done this then. All right, we'll go, go, we'll go grab this then. Wonders nerfed? Not yet, but the uh, the axe is soon to fall. That's all I have to say for Melee Hunter. Improve Rhett for PTSD from SM. Yeah, I can imagine improve Rhett's better for SM when you're getting hit so much. I guess I already... Yeah, I was, I was doing the Fall of Dunmadur quest for you. You talk to that guy and then you hand in, then you do the explosive, then you hand in, but... It looks like I've already done it, so... um. Wait, and I can't get the escort quest yet here either? No. Wait, what is the escort quest called here? It's not showing on my map. Really? You can't get it at 27. What's the guy called? Foggy. Starts... Requires level 28. Oh my god. Alright, you know what? I'm going to show you some super secret tech here, okay? Okay, hide the VOD. Um, this is like illegal mechanics right now. So what you do is you, you jump... You jump here. Okay, and then you're on this platform. They... Yeah, well... Uh, Look, it, it doesn't matter, okay? You're meant to jump again, but uh, I, I, I lagged, okay? I lagged in-game. Anyway, I wasn't going for that. I was going for this quest down here, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's close enough. Close. Oh, no. Anyway, yeah. I, I can't get the quest yet, so I was coming down here. I was that close to getting it. I swear, it just feels to get good to get that jump, even if you don't need it. Right, let's hand stuff in. <laughs> Should I make? No, no, no. Just uh, hide the ball. Okay. There we go. Hand you in there. Get the dwarf. Don't worry about it. I know about that one. I just wanted to flex by getting the jump, and then I missed the damn jump, man. <laughs> Can you believe it? So apparently you need stupid level 28 to get that quest. I thought I'd be able to get it at 27, but... Unlucky. Ooh, who's covered bag? Upgrade? Upgrade. Nice. Yeah, my warlock, I, um... You got my attention. I think I did that twice. 
I swear the um, pursuit of justice actually threw me off. This is why I failed it. Okay, totally not coping right now. The extra movement speed threw me off. I'm used to doing it without movement speed. Time to go for the sleeping bag quest. I have done it, actually. I need to use it because it's off cooldown. I'm not benefiting from it right now. You got the reference? Yeah, I saw um, a certain post the other day on Reddit, shall we say, with... Uh, uh, let's, ju let's just say some questionable things on it, which I may I may not endorse, per se, but... Yeah, let's, uh, let's just ignore that. It with Impret. You like Impret? I like Improved Retribution or it's so consistent. We'll turn Hello. in here. See you around. And I should have one or two upgrades which have been ethically sourced, okay? I can provide my own upgrades, right? It doesn't count as streamer bennies if I'm, I'm making them myself. Right, the, the, the Santa hat is also rip. Um, it's had a good run. Have a good one. But uh, this, this, this is... You may not like it, but this is peak male physical performance right now. This is the face of Giga Chad. You get from the... <laughs> what, the Festhead Skrook? Huh? Oh, the New Year's event. I know the one you mean, but uh, I do not have that in my bag. The final form activated. Look at look at this absolute clown suit I've gotten right now. This guy looks like such a classic character, it's unreal. The purple cape, the bright red and orange boots, the, the green and purple gloves and... and <laughs> This is such a clown suit. I love it. Oh, this is a show home angle for sure. Absolute Chad Paladin. Whoa! A specimen. He's a big boy. Three year old looks like when you let them choose the clothes. They pick. Uh, what is it? Fashion over function. What do you mean I can't use that here? But you can't use the sleeping bag inside an inn? Outrageous. Now I'm going to sleep around the side of the inn like a hobo. They wouldn't let me in. There was no room. Well, you just instantly pass out. Wait, I need a fire. Uh, so it's pretty much like Valheim, guys. You, uh, you actually need a fire to sleep. Um, the the roof above my head is the tree. Okay, this is this is this is just like Valheim. But I'm sleeping the wrong way around. I need the, I need the. There we go. The the beard has to breathe. <laughs> now, anyways, guys, um, been on for a little bit tonight. Uh, I'm going to head off for the time being because I am rather peckish and I need to go eat. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm typically on on Tuesday and Friday from about, it's about 4 p.m. Central European, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, so yeah, if you want to hang out around those times, I stream around them, which usually chat about the game a bit, you know, see what's up, do a bit of leveling or whatever else is on the menu for the day. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much everyone for dropping by, supporting, chatting, all of that good stuff. Appreciate it a lot. I hope you guys have a good rest of your Friday and the weekend. Uh, new videos coming soon. I haven't been uploading as much as I typically do. Um, just because it's... I've, I've got like... I've got a bunch of things in the works, but I just need to like finish them out. Do you know what I mean? And get them uploaded and so on and so forth. So there should be a bunch more regular content on the YouTube sooner rather than later. Anyways, guys, I will um, I'll see if there's anyone on Twitch. I'm not sure how you host on YouTube still, to be fair, but... Is there anyone online on Twitch that I can host, do you reckon? Um, 
If you're on Twitch or you want to follow on Twitch below the link on YouTube because I don't know how you raid on YouTube. Um, I'm going to go raid Sarth. He's uh, obviously he's been a guy who's been doing classic and just stuff around the game for a long time now. Um, I'm going to send over there. If you want to go watch his stream, say hi from me. You know, that would definitely be appreciated. Um, but yeah, and again, I just think I'd send you guys over there, you know, see what's up. Um, but anyways, that's all from me today. Um, I'll be out, and if you are around on Tuesday, around the same time, I shall see you then. Alright guys, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your weekend, and I'll catch you on the next one very soon. <laughs>